Looks like we did have a countdown and we're about ready to go here. Hopefully Yoshimitsu catches up on his gameplay here. <laughs> but we are off, so we'll try to keep this brief because this is a quick speed run. But like we mentioned before, they're looking for clears, doing a bunch in a row or combos, and when they link them together as they fall, they are chains. And the sweet spot you want to aim for here is probably like a five chain and then get like two or three combos mixed in as well. And that's how you just stack efficiently. You don't want your chains to be too big because your garbage blocks become larger in size and they'll give more screen shake, which allows the opponents to live just a little bit longer. Yeah, and for the layman, a uh, combo is when you match four or more in one go. A chain is when you're matching any number three and above uh, in mul multiples, so it'll be a three and then another three, one right after the other as they fall. That's the chain, and the stack is just what we refer to as the whole stack of panels that are in the game. So we, we had a little bit of a, uh, some pre-game guesses here as to who will be the favorite, because these races can go back and forth due to the RNG factor, but it looks like uh, Monty right now has a little bit of a lead. I know Yoshi started a little bit late, so we'll have to take an account for that and see how he catches up, but he's got a stage that's trolling him a little bit right now, so Monty with the firm lead. I took Monty, by the way, in the pre-game predictions, mostly because he's my Wario's Woods boy. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna, yeah. Uh, well, Monty off to a strong start. Yeah, each of us had a little bit of bias. I know Aries was picking FFR Pro because they're both from Canada, and I've just been friends with cards for the longest time, so always got to have faith in him. So you, you guys all know Yoshi's going to win now since we didn't pick the... Uh, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Also, I see in chat that this game is being compared to Pokemon Puzzle League. Yes, the, the game... The Pokemon Puzzle League is a sequel to this game, essentially. Uh, what happened was there was supposed to be an N64 panel to pawn, which is the Japanese version of this game. Just imagine the whole game, but with fairies. But it got scrapped, and uh, Nintendo gave the assets to a different company, and they decided to just reskin and re kind of redo the whole game as a uh, Pokemon. So it's one of the Card only Pokemon games to not be released in Japan. It's got a nine second. Uh... Yeah, that, being, that was crazy. Time on, getting a time on a stage under 10 seconds basically means the opponent, like, left their stack super high, and you had the foresight, and, uh, you know, you were able to read their side to tell, oh, I'm going to send a, a super small chain, and that'll probably kill them. Or you got just super lucky. I didn't quite see what happened there, but, like, getting a time that low uh, doesn't happen very often. And it's funny, uh, like Cypher said, you don't see a lot of times like that happen, but later on, they kind of become a little bit more common. As you can see, uh, th this run is divided into two parts, basically. You have stages one through eight, which the CPUs are just basically doing combos and doing clears. They're not really focusing on chains. And they'll keep their stacks relatively low, though sometimes they'll raise them. But on the last four stages, They'll play with high stacks and they'll go for those chains. And if they happen to drop them really quick, you can see a lot more of those really quick kills coming. Which I'm sure, I think Cards has gotten like a 7 second kill on Kamek before, I want to say. Yeah, I think um, in like, there's like, what one or two tasks of this mode floating around. And the task gets like 6 and 7 second kills. So that's basically the minimum bar. Which most of the time you won't see the runners go for because they that involves cutting off your chains early and that can be really risky. If you don't get the kill, you might be sitting there for another 30 seconds like Monty is right now going on the one minute mark on uh, Blark here. You have to actively go for that quick of a kill. So generally, um, runners go for like... Still a quick but somewhat safer kill, where on them being in the condition for getting a super quick kill. Getting into the later stages of the run now, and um, you will notice the opponents are 
plays in their stack more. And you might see them doing different strategies in terms of sending sm smaller chains. Um, I, I know when I used to run, I basically switched to doing like two sets of four chains. Um, I think past stage six, because it felt like it was more effective in terms of handling how the opponents behave in the later parts of the run. All right, so now we are getting to that final four section right now. It looks like Yoshi's got quite a bit of a lead since he did start a little bit later here. But uh, yeah, this is where you're going to see the AIs go in a little bit more and wasting. They can waste more time or they can die quickly. It's all dependent on how those chains shape up for them. But hopefully you'll get to see like a couple sub 15 seconds or maybe even another sub 10 second fight. But everyone pretty close right now. Uh, Monty's a little bit behind, but you can definitely make the comeback with these late stages. Another cool thing about this run is it has, uh, this is just a general fact about the game's engine, but it has uh, several neat, like, small frame window tricks you can do, such as um, you can, uh, you can, like, out underneath a block that's falling in another column. And uh, the block that you swap or you move over can sort of hold up two different columns at the same time if you switch that block on the right frame. And there's a number of those like uh, really precise tricks you can do that can sort of save you in a situation where you can't continue the chain otherwise. And it's just a neat thing if a runner can do those kinds of things consistently. Oh, did Monty take a death down at the bottom there? I think he did, unfortunate. Deaths, deaths won't do too much to you gameplay wise, but in a short speed run like this, it wastes like an entire stage time. And usually in a race format, it's going to be really, really hard to come back from. But yeah, we see Yoshi here. Uh, world record time had just passed for him, so you can see a little bit of the RNG in the play because he's not even on the last stage yet. But he's got a pretty commanding lead heading into Bowser. But this is when things can go all downhill. Bowser just likes to chain upon chain. His cursor speed is ridiculous at this level. And you can get a 10 second kill or he control you for even two minutes. Now, Bowser's really the only opponent in this run that'll remind you of opponents in super hard Pokemon Puzzle League. Speed and... Uh, his pension for clearing endlessly at times. Looks like FFR got a death there as well. Everyone just getting in their warm-ups, I guess, right now. They're like, uh, even though it's a race, you know, take some deaths, get them out of the way, and try to get some good attempts later on. It looks like cards might make the comeback here, though. Yoshi is getting close to this kill, but Bowser is just finding clear after clear right now. There's really nothing you can do about it. Much of this in this run, as opposed to other versions of Panels Upon, like we've been talking about Pokemon Puzzle League, the super hard run in that, um, basically every single opponent is crap shooting in terms of whether they're clear or not. Uh, in this game, the AI is not as smart, and like a lot of times they'll kind of keep their cursor in place while they wait for your garbage to finish finish falling. And then like once it's come to a standstill, then they'll start trying to clear. So sometimes that happens. Um, which this game is much more, uh, oh, looks like cards did take it in the end. Yeah, Damn. there he goes. He me, ends but, up uh, taking I, it. I see a dead Bowser on the floor there on his stream. Hopefully his internet didn't cut out as soon as that happened. But yeah, I guess he ends up taking it RTA wise. I'm not sure when Yoshi finished there too, if they would have started at the same time. It probably oh, would have right. been yeah, really close. I don't I don't know what was the cause of that delay. If that was like on his end or internet problems or what. But 
But yeah, FFR coming in a uh, close third place there as well. Made up a lot of ground to come back on Bowser after that death. And then uh, we got Monty uh, on Bowser right now. Let's see if we can see that uh, quick kill at display here. Bowser has a high stack, but not quite the follow-up that he wanted to take out Bowser there. Bowser, it did look like Bowser was in a position there to get killed quickly, but he didn't quite have the coverage ready to do it. And cards is cards of stream is still frozen on my end, so hopefully. Mm -hmm. mm, 33 second clear, not too bad. Yep. Monty does end up finishing that. And now as FFR and Yoshi have already jumped into, we're just gonna be seeing regular attempts from all these people. So this game, especially at stage one, Lakitude just seems to be like a troll most of the time. So you will see resets all the time at this first stage. Because I, me personally, I think it's one of the hardest ones to do in the run. I would say that probably in the first um, two to four stages, if the opponent clears at all, they're just going to reset. It's always really satisfying to see those big, like, times nine and times ten combos. Those are really cool. So, as I mentioned before, in order to get the world record here, I, I wish I would have done the calculations beforehand, but they're going to be shooting for that sub-20 range, especially at the beginning stages, because you want as much leeway as you can towards the end of the run. So... Even sometimes they'll be shooting for 11, 12 second times. Those are pretty common if they can uh, get the right setups for garbage and uh, combos and chains. Cards is on the credit screen right now, so I wonder what's going on with his he, setup. He has what he deems poop net issues. Um, there are just random days where his internet will just go to complete garbage. That's unfortunate. But, uh... How the other three are doing right now. I think Yoshimitsu is on a decent run right now into stage three. Yeah, he's got the appropriate garbage sent there, too, so he's gonna get a 12-second kill on Poochie, and that's what you're going to be aiming for. You want those 11, 12, 13 second kills. They're all really great. And I, I want to say going into like a four minute pace after the first eight stages is a really good uh, run if you want to chase that world record time. One of the things that you will probably see on cards screen actually is uh, there actually is RNG manipulation in this game. Uh, cards figured it out after a lot of uh, trying to look at the RAM values and everything in uh, emulator. But basically, he found it for Pamela DuPont, the Japanese counterpart, and it involves looking at the blinking eyes of the character. So in Tetris Attack, it's Yoshi. So he waits a certain moment, and then he counts, like, I think, four Mississippi or something, and then he hits A, and uh, that's the perfect RNG he gets. So you're going to be seeing a lot of resets from him until he gets that RNG. And it means that he gets to start off the game with the exact same panels every single time. And if he doesn't get, uh, like, whatever second clear that he wants on it, he's just going to keep resetting. Mm -hmm. And it's super consistent because the AI is going to do the same thing and react every time. So it's down to a science just how quickly, and he'll get that same time every single time if he gets that seed. And I'm pretty sure he has it for a couple stages after that as well, but it's frame-perfect timing again, and if he doesn't get it, he'll most likely just play on with what's given there. Yeah. So we got FFR the farthest along right now on stage 5. He's been getting uh, pretty solid times here. Uh, a big thing here is... Uh, we did stress that combos are pretty good in that they're smaller garbage blocks and they generally stack faster and get quicker kills. Uh, these guys are going to be trying to link those within their chains. And sometimes you'll see what's called the lag chain, which is like alternating two chains at the same time. So they just like stack up uh, quicker and quicker. 
Yeah, one of one of the um, I guess more advanced strategies that you want to employ is your chains uh, at a quicker pace than just the default, like three clear into three clear into three clear. Because like that'll send a big chain to the opponent, but it's not very fast. And um want to send your chains quickly just because it's faster, but like if you if you get into the opponent more quickly, it's more likely that they'll be in a worse position to respond to your garbage. Um so yeah, like um BB Forku was just saying, if you put combo if you weave combos within your chains, then um you'll add an extra line of garbage that'll take up like an extra line on the opponent's screen when it finally drops with not like a comparatively smaller amount of time spent uh on your screen to do so we saw cards finally get the rng on his end uh 18 second there still pretty good you can run with that but on his first two stages he had both 11s and i'm not sure if the second stage was part of that rng as well but that first one definitely was him manipulating it i've been paying attention to how good ffr's pace is but uh Heading into stage eight here, I think he's got to run pretty deep. I think at this point, it, he can't get the record. I think he just kind of wants to go through the game. And sometimes you just want to get a feel for those later stages because uh, heading into stage eight at almost five minutes, I want to say it's maybe theoretically possible, but you would need the quickest stages of all time to still get it. But yeah, two minutes for the last four stages, that's pretty impossible. When I ran this game back in the day, I um, I paid more attention to in-game time than I did real-time, so I don't have like real-time splits in my head for the various stages. I think that the in-game time equivalent for the record is something like 3-1x, three, three I want to say, right? That is a good question. I guess we could bring up the record for it and just do a quick division but I think it's on speedrun.com it's just i don't want to type because my keyboard's really loud <laughs> i got you <laughs> yeah the in game time is oh not easy my bad the in game time's 317 it's okay so is like 21 second per stage on average, roughly. Have like anything above 20 seconds, that's hurting them. <laughs> so it's a it's a total of a hundred and ninety-seven seconds. You divide that twelve times, and cards run averages around sixteen and a half seconds per stage. For the I would world record. Then. 16, <laughs> 16 and a half seconds. I think he had like two stages above 20 seconds in his run. That's how insane his RNG was. Mm -hmm. And which those 20 second ones can hurt, but I definitely recommend watching his run because the last four stages are absolutely insane. The like luck he gets in it and <laughs> the enemies just die so quickly. It also looks like cards let us know in the chat here that he does have some RNG manipulation for stage two, but he's not going to be showing off any of it, so it's not consistent enough, I guess. Those insider tips. I'm pretty sure he currently is the only person to do that kind of manip as well. And, and uh, like we mentioned before, not only on Tetris Attack, but he mainly did it on Panel Dupon before. Which uh, we could talk a little bit about that game because even though this is a reskin from uh, Panel Dupon, the speedruns are actually very, very different in which you want to approach them. Yeah, Finally so enough. I well, I'll let you go. In, into Panel Dupon uh, back when I was more invested in this game personally. And um, I found that the AI is actually different between the two games, and uh, probably cards could speak in more detail about this. But uh, I do believe the AI is different. Like, the AI has um, 
more proclivity towards clearing in Panel to Pond. And I'm pretty sure also there's something different about the block speed, uh, the block falling speed in Panel to Pond. So there are some minor differences that lend it toward being a more difficult to complete run than Tetris Attack. Yeah, you'll definitely, if you ever watch a video of that compared to uh, Tetris Attack, you'll see the runs. They do a lot more uh, combos and chains to top off the opponents. Because especially some of the uh, later matches I've seen, the opponents will just stick with like one to two rows of blocks and just try to clear everything as possible. So you literally have to crush them dead. I think another difference uh, that I'm remembering right now is in Panel to Pawn, uh, I mentioned that the opponents, uh, the CPUs, when you drop garbage on them, sometimes they'll just like keep their cursor still while the the, uh, the garbage is clearing, and then they'll start moving once um, once it's done. In Panel to Pawn, their delay before they start moving again is shorter, and so that's just like another thing contributing to them toward clearing more often. So we have Monty going into his run right now. Obviously, the world record has passed. Uh, like I mentioned before, a lot of these runners do just like to get a feel of the entire run as it is. Or you might see if he gets trolled enough here, he, he might just like, you know what? I'm not going to finish the rest of this run. We'll just quit it now and head back into the next attempt. But you, you see RNG taking its course right now. Uh, Barely any stages or runs have gone past like stage two or three right now. But we have cards on the right RNG sequence again, so he's going to try to test his luck here. We really need to have a love for the game to run a puzzle game like this with so much RNG. The day, and at the end of the day, it comes down to you need that level of consistency to make quick chains consistently. And then uh, it's basically up to AI whether they clear or not. And uh, that's the run. <laughs> and there's there's some, there's some more nuance to it. Like, uh, you need to be able to monitor what the opponent's doing. Uh, so you can tell when to cut off your chain, etc. really is a lot of dedication and dealing with frustrating RNG. I think it's cool to watch a game like this. Uh, it's hard to see if you're not too invested in it, but you can tell the different play styles of each person. Like, specifically, I like to watch Yoshimitsu. He's a, he's a person who's played the game for a while, but I'd say kind of relatively new to the speedrunning scene. And his gameplay is so combo-focused. He... Almost, I it, between him and FFR, I'm not sure who has the fastest cursor speed, but Yoshi definitely can build up that garbage quicker than anybody else, I would say. Which can be good for him, or it can be his downfall, because when the opponent does make the clear, that's a lot of uh, blocks that are going to be sent on the opponent's side, so they have a lot more room to scan and look for more clears to delay the game. Yeah, because one of the things is, uh, FFR is known for his line clear world records, the spa service. So if you end up comparing his gameplay style to everybody else, you, you'll see a bit more differences there. I say that um, one thing I really enjoy when I watch another skilled uh, catch the attack player a puzzle week player is seeing them go for different clears than I would go for in the same situation. Like when I'm watching someone play, I'll just be watching their board and I see, oh, like the the there's the yellows clear right there, and then there's the red clear right after that. But then they might go for something totally uh totally different than what I was seeing. And they'll get like a times 13 chain off that. And it's just really cool to see that people have little variations in their pattern recognition. Yeah, it's very different watching a game like this because there's a lot of different right answers that you could do in comparison to a puzzle game like, let's say, uh, Tetris. 
where there's only so many correct moves that you can see. If, if somebody does a mist drop, you can very clearly tell that it's a mist drop. While in this game, what's something that looks like it might be wrong actually ends up uh, just being them cutting off their chain or them getting a chain that you didn't even see at first because there's so many separate colors. And they saw that if they move that one from the very edge over to the other edge, then it's going to work for them. So. I want to reiterate what CFB said in the chat, by the way. Like, working combos into chains on a consistent basis is actually incredibly difficult. Uh, another another detail about that, uh, working combos into chains, is that work multiple four combos into a chain, because two four combos just puts um, two three blocks in the same row in the eventual garbage that gets sent to the opponent, and that doesn't actually add to their line height. So you want to get like one four combo and then the rest be five or six combos. And it's really difficult to find those fives and sixes on short notice when you're assembling a chain. Um, that consistently is, it's always really impressive to me. So a little bit ago, we had two runs that did make it quite far on both cards and Yoshi's screen. They kind of uh, reset about the same time, but they had like a three minute pace going into stage six and seven. And that I feel like that can be one of the most awkward parts of the run. It's when uh, the AI is still keeping their habits of just like going for some clears a little bit slower, but their cursor speed's just that little bit faster. And all it takes is one garbage clear from the opponent, and it's going to waste, you know, 10 to 20 more seconds trying to beat it. But here comes Cards again. He's going to get that 11-second stage off of that RNG manip. It's really cool watching, because he sets up that 9 combo for it and everything, and then... like reset pretty early into stage one I've seen yeah I think Yoshi definitely wants to get off to a really good start or else he doesn't see the point of trying to continue but if you just looked at like the play he did there he's he just has a really good grasp on where the blocks are on the screen and even though he didn't get that kill he was getting the lag chains there finding combos pretty easily a sensible reset because he saw that he uh, like Wakatu lowered his stack one row and thus um, it was like he, his garbage was one row too short to actually kill him there. Um, except they're like five seconds in. I'm like, oh, that's weird. <laughs> I, I haven't caught the details of why he reset only five seconds in. I see chat talking about this, um, with the name being Tetris Attack. So, a um, little bit of a history lesson that I might have to repeat over as new people come in, but that's fine. The game was released in Japan as Panel the Pawn. It's the same gameplay, but they had fairies. Nintendo, rightfully so, realized that the game, a puzzle game with just fairies really won't sell well uh, stateside, since it'll mainly just appeal to girls. So they asked, uh, they reskinned it for Yoshi, and they asked Hank Rogers if they could use the uh, Tetris name in it, since uh, Tetris was also a puzzle game and was selling really well, and they wanted to capitalize on that. And uh, Hank gave his approval for it, and that's how they sold it. Later on, Hank Rogers is uh, on the record saying that it's the worst decision he's ever done since this game is as far away from Tetris as you could ever get. <laughs> and uh, the game actually got back translated. Japan as a uh, Yoshi paneled upon and it's it's just the same game so mm -hmm. and do a little bit to that licensing and whatnot later iterations of this game did take on the uh, puzzle league tag from now on which you could see with a uh, Pokemon puzzle league and planet puzzle league and I think there was just a uh, one on the Game Boy Advance that was bundled with Dr. Mario that was just called puzzle league yeah, the, the naming convention of this series is strange. Like, it started out, um, obviously that's a Japanese, like, Romaji name, and then it got, uh, it got the Tetris tag, and then, uh, it changed to Puzzle League, and then it stayed as Puzzle League. 
after like the third or fourth iteration of the series and that's like kind of the series like the overarching series title but like you'll find that people refer to the series in several different ways depending on like which game that they uh played the most in the series like i generally refer to the series uh Try to refer to it as Puzzle Week, but sometimes I just call it Tetris Attack <laughs> while referring to the series. It's weird. Mm -hmm. And I definitely know people who refer to it as the Panel de Pond series, too, just because that was the very first one that came out. So it, it's a weird game in that sense, like Cypher mentioned. But yeah, you can refer to it however you please. <laughs> There's like... Was he, uh... He's the guy who... Okay, so I'm going to explain this right now instead of typing in chat. Um, when the Tetris license was owned by the Russians, um, there's actually a whole documentary made by the BBC. I recommend you watching it if you're into that type of thing. But uh, back in the day, when Tetris was just getting off, there was a guy called uh, Roger Stein, I believe, and he bought the rights from the Russians for uh, Tetris, and then he started selling that to companies like Atari and everybody else. And um, Hank Rogers managed to get uh, buy also of those rights as well uh, for the Famicom version of the game. And Nintendo was like, this game is selling really well. Why do we need the um, rights from this uh, Stein guy when we should get it directly from the Russians? So they sent Hank Rogers to uh, directly to Russia to try to get the rights. And it turns out the Russians had no idea that this guy was basically reselling the rights to their own product to everybody else so nintendo managed to buy the full console rights for, and portable rights for tetris because of hank rogers intervening and going to russia to get those rights for him which later then leads into a lawsuit of nintendo versus atari tengen because atari um was making a uh, nes tetris made by ed log who is a pretty famous programmer and uh, they actually won the rights, obviously, because Nintendo said, nope, we own the rights as of this day. You cannot sell the Atari 10 gun version of Tetris. They all have to be destroyed. Actually, uh, own Tangan Tetris. That was the version of Tetris that my dad and I played as a kid when I was a kid. It is, oh. I think, the superior version of Tetris on the NES from a casual uh, standpoint there. It's definitely not as competitive because... NES Tetris just get Nintendo Tetris just gets insanely hard after a certain amount because um, the Tengen Tetris, the speed curve kind of just slowly curves up. But in NES Tetris, it's like a log curve, so it just spikes. So that's why it's preferred for like speed running and everything else. But actual Tetris game wise, the Atari one is definitely superior. She is um, after the run here. And it looks like that he's stricter about the pace he keeps. So he might actually have a promising run going in right now. Yeah, he's got another sub-20 fight here. And you, like I said before, the average is somewhere around like that uh, 15 and a half mark. Or 16 and a half, rather. Uh, but you'll get those stages that are 11 seconds, so you can make up with the 20-second stages. But yeah, he's he's on a pretty decent pace right now. Four minutes into stage seven, you definitely got plenty of time if you get those quick sub-15 fights from now on. And he actually sent a really big chain and combo here. This might be a little bit too much, but he gets oh. lucky there. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes it's just enough if the AI's got to look all the way across the screen to find that clear, then you'll end up getting those kills. But if the opponent did find the clear there, that garbage block was super big. It was going to cause a lot of shake to delay the game, and we might have been, uh, we might have seen a reset from him after that. He would. I, I think he. he I'm pretty sure he would have reset if uh, Lunchfish had been just a few frames uh, quicker. That would have been easily like 10, uh, 10 seconds minimum added onto that time. But he's having a bad Raven here. Yeah, that, that's going to ultimately re Raven, lead to a reset. Dead. Get back in my attempts. <laughs> Did you have a character in specific that would kind of kill a majority of the runs for you, Cypher? I 
think that a like Arctic and one fish killed a lot of runs. It's got to them in the first place, but I remember in my um for my run that was on SDA, like I note that I got a good blarg when usually my blargs are awful. Maybe I'm misremembering that. I don't know. It's been a long time. <laughs> Yeah, it's hard to say. I know, like, a popular thing that is within the community, though. Certain people usually just get trolled on specific characters. I want to say that a lot for, like, Pokemon Puzzle League. But even people have those characters in this game. And I remember uh, at the SGDQ race for 2016, I believe, uh, we had uh, Blame Poochie signs because that's a common opponent for people that uh, uh, get their runs ruined, so... Hashtag blame Poochie. Poochie was not a problem for me, um, on average. Or actually, um, Flying Wiggler was more of a problem for me. It's hard to say for the attempts that I've done, at least beginning game, it's probably just lack of two to be honest, but man, I don't think I've ever had a fast Bowser, so he ruins everything for me. Which he, he probably does that for everyone too, though. <laughs> yeah, you know, I don't think I've actually gotten a, um, like a sub 15 Bowser in a run. Favorite song in this game? Because this game has a, a lot of amazing tracks. That it does. Um, it's hard to say. Uh, I like. Probably Lunch Fisher's track. It's a. Uh, I don't know how to describe it. It's just uh, that a fat to. slap face. Yes. <laughs> I think though one of the crowning achievements of this game is the uh, credits music at the end of the run. Oh yeah. I mean, it, it's well, very okay. That, that actually is my favorite song in this game, and it's one of my favorite video game songs of any game period. Uh, but in terms of stage songs. Um, Joel to Poochie's theme and um, Marshall to Blarg's theme. Is that that Blarg's theme in particular like goes on for so long before it loops, and it's it like takes you on this oral journey. It's like the guitar goes so crazy. It's tense. I love it. <laughs> Yeah, one of my life dreams is to either participate in or listen to high quality live rendition of the credits theme from this game. Yeah, that would that would be something to listen to. I I'd like to hear that as well. I think anytime a lot of old music just gets redone because, you know, they had the limitations on what they could actually make and when you just hear it beautifully redone, it's it's just great. <laughs> I remember when I was a kid, there was a sound test in this game. Um, I would just put the sound test on um, I, I was really partial to the like the end game music, um, comic and Hook Bill and those guys. Uh, I would put their stage music on and just let that loop for hours and just like chill out. So we got two runs that are uh, actually three runs that are starting pretty well right now. Uh, Fafar and Yoshi both on stage four and cards has got a really, really quick start with a 11 and a 10 at the beginning here. So keep an eye on those three as they're progressing. Unfortunately for Yoshi, he got a little bit uh, caught up there for about 30 plus seconds on the previous stage, which isn't impossible to come back from. But, you know, sometimes you just want to test the waters and see what will actually happen in the rest of the run, because we've definitely had record runs in the past that, you know, it had one really bad stage, but everything else was pretty solid. And that's why you could get that good of a time. Yeah, I think for the current record, there is one bad stage, but 
I'm pretty sure that that stage is like or something. So in the scheme of things, it's actually not that bad for like being the bad stage of the run. <laughs> It's funny to think upon a little bit of the history for speedruns of this game. It's definitely one of the earliest ones that was considered to do speedruns of. But it's had wide gaps throughout its history of someone kind of like doing runs about it and either forgetting about it or waiting until the next person to come up. For example, I know this run popped up in SDA around 2007. A guy named Iron Knuckle was, I think, the first person to have like a time road. And back then, like Cypher mentioned, uh, I was trying to remember who the guy before Darkwing Duck was. I cannot remember. Uh huh. And uh, yeah, Iron Knuckle had a 619, and most or all of the times were all in game time. If you were roughly to translate that to a run now, it was probably around 10 minutes RTA. So. Just about every single one of these runners can probably get sub 10 every single time. So that was kind of just like the, the foot in the door there. But then uh, Darkwing about two years later cut that time down by a minute. And that's where things were kind of getting established for the game in terms of combos and chains and stuff. But it still had a lot of work to do until uh, our co-commentator here, Cypher, in 2010... Uh, which is currently his PB now because he doesn't do attempts of the game anymore. Got a uh, 419 in game time, which translates to an 806 RTA. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that run being like the first run of any game I really put out, I thought it was pretty good. And desire to come back to doing runs of this game since. I'm, you know, I, I kind of have had a bit of interest in doing stage clear runs at certain points over the years, but I've just never really committed to doing it. I think that that run, um, probably, it, it's definitely not as flashy and perhaps not as entertaining. Like, uh, the fact that it removes the huge RNG component would make it more fulfilling to improve your time in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I agree with that. And like he mentioned, he said he was, you know, currently or could be interested in stage clear, which is something I've always adored about games of this series is uh, this is kind of like the premier category for every game versus com, which is kind of funny because it does have, you know, a good amount of RNG, but there's just some kind of appeal to it that makes it pretty fun to watch. But there's other things that are available in every game that's including uh, stage clear runs which is basically you have a set amount of lines to clear, and then once you do that, you move on to the next stage. So that just showcases speed for the most part there, and I'd recommend watching any of FFR Pro's runs of that because it, it showcases his cursor speed to the max there. And then as Got well it. as... Oh, go ahead, Cypher. Cursor speed as well as, like, finding as many... Clears. You don't. You don't even want to do chains in that mode. Uh, you want to do clears and combos, but you you want to find as many clears that don't block each other, in terms of being able to assemble other clears after that. And it's actually very difficult. When like, and very complicated uh, when you just hear that. But when you actually sit down to try and find like five clears in the span of two seconds, um, it can be really stressful and difficult. Uh, and it's and to me it's stressful in a good way. It's like um, in your pattern recognition and like uh, your spatial re spatial awareness skills. And then along with that category, we've had one that developed from probably what was like the go-to thing to do in this game, and that's a uh, like a marathon speed runs, which. Uh, time attacks in mode 2, you get 2 minutes to get as many points as you can, and that was the premier thing to do in terms of the competitive stuff for this game. 
like back in the early 2000s, there was a website called TetrisAttack.net, and a lot of people would test their skills to see who could get the highest time on uh, time attack, and that carried over to Pokemon Puzzle League as well. And you had different modes like 3D and different levels to consider. And uh, that kind of evolved. The people who did enjoy that, it kind of got pushed a little bit over to speedrunning in terms of uh, marathon, where you just pick a score that you want to go to and then see how quick you could do that. So uh, shout outs to Blinzer, who's one of uh, the puzzle leaguers in the community. Very, very good at the game. Uh, that's one of the main things he does. I would highly recommend watching his marathon 100k hard run on Pokemon Puzzle League. And it's just insane how fast he plays and how quick he can find chains. Because you got all three of these different modes. You have uh, stage clear, which just focuses on getting clears and you don't see big chains. You have time attack, which is uh, people who are doing extremely big chains the whole time. And then you have versus mode, which is kind of like a hybrid of both. You're going to want to go for chains, but you cut them off a little bit quicker. Yeah, I'm going to second the recommendation to watch Windsor's run. Um, the opportunity to watch Windsor play in, uh, in person a bunch of times now. And his... Vision, even with which he moves the cursor, is actually like unreal to me. I try to play as quickly as Windsor does. I will generally make a lot of cursor errors and just flub my chains, but he's somehow able to keep it under control and pull off these um, chain links that, like, I feel like to play for. 50 to 100 hours just to get my my um, consistency and my controller dexterity to the level that he has it at. While well, Cypher has been mentioning that, I think we have one of our first runs that has the potential of going somewhere right now. Uh, we have Yoshi Mitsu uh, at, about, at about five and a half minutes in and he just got done uh, with stage nine here. So he's got a lot of work to do here, but he's definitely on pace to where something could happen here. So keep an eye on his playing field. Yeah, I think he needs three incredibly good stages to have a chance, but uh, he is late in the game and he's still on a run. <laughs> Remarkable. Be that great in terms of naval prana. He's got a good setup here too, and yeah, he gets the 11. Got the Let's go. Okay, this this could be a thing right now. He's got to hope that the opponents do play with those high stacks, and he's going to purposefully drop those chains and combos pretty short. And so, yeah, this is definitely possible right now, but he needs two really good stages back-to-back -back here. So let's see what happens on uh, Kamek. And then a 10, literally. <laughs> Really short. Oh. oh man, oh man. This shows promise that he's Cammy's gotta die right now though. He's not enough. Drop this uh no, it looks over. Yeah. With random uh isolated clears, and you don't want them to do that. You want them to try to like lower their stack by like dropping blocks from the sides to the middle because that's generally like their least efficient way of lowering their stack. Once they start doing that, you're probably going to win pretty soon. Yeah, that, that's really unfortunate. This this is such a common thing in the late game stages that um, a run like Cards' recent record, the 701, is just so mind-boggling. Yeah, and this is this is just Tetris attack, it, the the perfect definition of it right here. Like you see, that run was going so well, and now Cam makes like, well, I'm going to uh, troll you for a minute plus, which is probably <laughs> the total of three stages altogether. Must be a little dejected now, so he probably sort of uh, half. Ha ha ha!
Yeah, unfortunate there. Luckily, I, I guess the thing that this game has on its side is that it's not too long of a run. Like, due to the nature of the RNG, it won't take long to try to get back into the run. Which is funny, because we did mention uh, the records kind of, like, have come every two years or so. Especially, uh, I guess what I didn't get back to, when Cypher did take in 2010, it took almost five years until the record got beat again which it was by cards and then he kind of lowered it down throughout the past couple years but this record has been beaten twice in the past month which is actually pretty crazy once by cards last week which is the 701 time and then yoshi mitsu beat it uh just a month ago with a 707 so the potential is there you kind of just gotta we we stress that you got to be lucky but most of the time you just got to be playing on your game too and just seeing uh, all the clears on the screen because I've definitely had a lot of runs lost to just me not playing too well. It's also pretty funny because I think Cards got the record because he was practicing for Chase the Record. Yeah, I remember him saying that in his comments. Reaction to, like, when Bowser died in his 701, his reaction is pretty good. Dude, the Enjoy classic that. Cards reactions. Cards is a... He's a pretty big person in the community. He's known for running all the games in the series. So he's held multiple world records and holds probably the most right now. Like, it's crazy. He has a clean sweep over all the categories in a Pokemon Puzzle League uh, versus comm modes. So, yeah, check out a lot of his videos, especially his reactions are pretty priceless on his record runs. He beat Monty's run in uh, s Hard. Because I think Monty had 1740 something, right? Yeah, he beat. It, this is what's funny. He beat Yoshi by like six seconds, and he beat Monty by three seconds in S Hard. <laughs> so, cards barely oh, that, taking records. For playing Warriors Woods for a year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we actually just had a Pokemon Puzzle League speed run tournament, so we've, we've had a lot of engagement in these games recently. We had a Tetris attack one last year. And we've had like a lot of good PBs get set, and then we've had cards he uh, record uh, S hard, like we said. Uh, I believe after, no, no, I think it was right before the finals. I can't quite remember, but he's been putting work to these games recently, and it shows right now. She but, is uh, back at Blarg already. Yeah, just about to mention that. Let's see what he can do right now. This is where it's going to get really tough. He was a little bit late, I want to say, or uh, dragged on his chain a little bit too long, but he gets the 14 second time still. Yeah, you'll see right there. So Blarg was doing some random clears and then like clears. So then he defaulted to the behavior of like dropping blocks from the side into the middle. And once they go to that, they're just dead pretty much. <laughs> All right, Yoshi with a really quick start. Great combos and a decent chain filled in. Is it going to be enough to top off? Oh, not even close, actually. Lunge can be a real pain in the ass. Which actually um, brings his stack down really low pretty frequently. It's like, it's acceptable um, to have a stage that slow. And like to have one stage that slow. But it's going to really in other stages. Yeah, so definitely very possible still here. I'd say this is very comparable to the last run that we saw him do as well because he was around that four and a half minute mark, I want to say, after Raphael here. I just want to say that chain he started off this round with was uh, majestic to watch. He had, like, lag chains, and I think he had combos, and it's, like, I'm pretty sure that Yoshi can do that kind of thing with DC consistency, and it's just really impressive. Alright, another pretty long stage there. Uh, looks like he's gonna still keep going for it. I think it's theoretically possible. I need to, like, pull up some personal splits or something to see what 
the potential for the fastest stages could like still make a world Cards, record or not. Cards has splits on his SR com um, entry. Stealth is also on Blark, so he's approaching the second half of the run, and uh, Monty, too. Pace is a little behind Cards. While FFR is in lack of two hell. <laughs> yeah, we we kind of just seen Yoshi's run drop off right now. The past three stages have all Four been problems. like around 20 to, and 30 seconds. Yeah, Monty's still going to be continuing this run. Certainly not impossible for this moment. We've seen FFR. Uh, I know he's finished one run, uh, but he's pretty reset heavy at the beginning, I'd say, too, and hasn't really gotten off to the kind of start that he does one. And Cards, Cards has been getting to that mid game and kind of getting trolled, but I'd say he has the slight advantage just because he can get that 11 second stage at the beginning every time if he does hit that RNG minute. Yeah, but Yoshi's just going to finish off this run. 20 seconds till the world record passes. Impossible at this moment, but it is nice to see these stages finish. And I will say he's probably the most consistent of getting these sub eight times, which is a very exclusive club to get into. In fact, only these four people have sub eights. No one else is like... There's a couple times close to it. Actually, me and Cypher have the 5th and 6th place times on the leaderboard. The very tip of the top is all in this race, either playing or commentating. So yeah, now I guess we refer to Yoshi getting that uh, sub 8 here, which is very possible. Uh, he was a little bit slow on the garbage. And this is where it can be pretty problematic at Bowser. Because he's going to send you big chains too. And there's just going to be lag all over both screens. Because chances are oh, you got that right Whoa, did you see all those combos he cleared at the bottom of the screen? It's like a 6 and a 5 at the same time. <laughs> That's why I personally love watching uh, Yoshi. He, like I said before, he just loves to uh, spam combos there. Like you just saw that entire stack go away, though. <laughs> it's funny that, like, um, certain threshold of skill and Tetris attack, like, it's, it's pretty easy to consistently make large chains. But then, and then you're able to assemble a a large array of combos while like making chains too. That's when like you know someone is real at this game. Well, we see Bowser doing his thing now, going on about a minute and a half. This guy, he literally ruins every run. If you don't kill him in less than 15 seconds, chances are he might troll you for a minute plus like he is right now. Bowser in my PB is 22 seconds, so luckily he didn't go on and on, but I, he, I think he cleared once in my run. Nintendo! Monty is uh, opting to finish out this run here, even though it's already past record pace. Uh, heading into stage five with a decent pace, looks like. Yeah, it's good to see FFR getting off to something good right now. Uh, Froggy gets the quick clear, which necessarily isn't the worst thing, as long as he has a decent follow-up. Because it... Oh, he went up for the second tier at the top. <laughs> Yeah, 
Yeah, that's something uh, we Puzzle League speedrunners don't like too much is uh, second tier strats are when uh, your opponent has some blocks above their lowest garbage block and they'll go up and find a clear there instead. So it's like kind of bailing them out and extending the match even more. Hey. Do you though when you're actually playing versus mode? They, they, they do feel really trolly. <laughs> <laughs> Cards is on a pretty good pace right now as he just finished his uh, Flying Wiggler at 12 seconds. Two minutes in and you finish the first four stages. If you repeat that, you're going to be a little bit over uh, four minutes for the next four there. So keep an eye on him. Uh, we got Froggy who seems to be ruining some runs every once in a while here. And he didn't get off to a good start here either. Hopefully he cleans this up pretty well. Are you able to get cards of splits up, by the way? Because I think they're on his speedrun.com run entry. Uh, I checked his run and he doesn't have speedrun specifically on there. Maybe he did for an older run, I want to say. I will see if I can find that, though. His 724 was his PB before then. He does have splits for that. Let me check his current time again, just in case. Okay. Oh, he doesn't have him there. Yeah, but even on his 724, which is, you know, pretty decent pace along with that, he gets done uh, with stage 8 at 441 RTA. So, yeah, you, they're looking at about that four and a half minute time. Also, enters Froggy stage, like the actual uh, boards come up at around 2.04, I want to say. That sounds about right. Uh, for, froggy... for Froggy stage entry is um, kind of a landmark you want to look out for if they have a decent pace going on. Mm-hmm. It looks like if I were to take a guess during this run, he entered it around like 225. So you have a little bit of leeway. The quicker, the better, like how he had at the uh, beginning of this run. Though he needs to get lucky here. It looks like he didn't send enough garbage, though. So I think we're expecting a reset because he's he kind of didn't move there at the end. Kind of frustrated, probably a little bit. But yeah, I think if we're going to compare it to this uh, 724 run, you want to look at the froggy entry probably around that 220 mark. That's a good spot to aim for. And then uh, the uh, stage 8 after Raphael probably around the 4.5 minute mark. Even a little bit more because you can still get pretty lucky with the end stages. But I've definitely seen runs of the first eight stages get sub four RTA, which is actually pretty insane. But then the last four stages just uh, are a little bit trolly. First eight, damn. <laughs> You'll, you'll get some crazy paces in this game, but never get your hopes up until that very final stage ends, because <laughs> this game's pretty brutal. One stage is going to take, take it away for you. That's kind of another reason that I watched uh, like old episodes of Doug when I did attempts, is because like there was no reason for me to get attached to any run prematurely. And so, I was just like starting runs and starting runs, but um, I'm focused on another thing. That's pretty interesting that you had that like mindset for it too. It, was it just that the the really early stages didn't take much attention, or they were just so inconsistent, or what was your thought process through it? Like, I wasn't literally watching it while doing the gameplay. 
But uh, basically, once I finished my chain, I would like go back to I would like move my eyes back to Doug. And uh, you know, I uh, I didn't stream runs back then because barely anyone was streaming speedruns um, until speedruns live came around. Basically, that was uh, I was doing runs of this game before that era, and um, I just was watching episodes to sort of keep myself more engaged. A game like this where um, the, the run can die at any stage. And uh, it takes a while for you to become invested in a run of this game. So we are about a little over one hour in of doing attempts. And if we do have some uh, new viewers in, because I'm pretty sure we are on front page right now. Uh, this is Chase for the record. Uh, this is an event where we have four of the best runners duking it out, trying to get the world record tonight. And this is featuring Tetris Attack. Uh, so all five of these runners have the four best times on the leaderboards. This is the versus com category for very hard. So they have 12 stages that they're going to go through and try to beat in less than 701, which is the world record at the middle of the screen there. Oh, we are in front page. That's cool. Welcome everyone. Tetris Attack is a fantastic game that I recommend everyone give a try to. Yeah, and also, okay. shout outs to Speed Gaming for allowing us to do this. Uh, me personally, I'm from a uh, community called Puzzle General, and we just, uh, we've had so many things showcased on these channels. So shout outs to the people behind the scenes, Feasel and everyone else. Because like Cypher said, this is a very great game. And if you love any kind of puzzles, you should definitely try this out sometime. I uh, I take every opportunity I can get to plug Feasel and give him props because um, he spends a lot of his time running this channel and running these tournaments and chasing the record events and uh, we wouldn't really have any of this content without him. Once again, Feasel. I guess after all that, let's try to get back into the action here. We got Yoshi on a little bit of a run right now. It looks like this one's going to go a little bit over 20, but he's about at the 3, like 46 mark when he did finish that. That's a, a little bit behind pace, I want to say, but uh, you have so much leeway again with the end stages that if you are behind what we said earlier that four and a half minute pace after stage eight uh you're just gonna have to get super quick stages later on and once again lunge is just keeping his stack really low making things difficult Whoa. but he did die there before being able to clear <clears throat> man that, that was scary he was one swap away and all those blues were basically lined up and that would have turned that stage probably 15 to 20 seconds longer. This is when they die, when their um, their last swap has actually been made, but the game hasn't registered the clear yet. So it's like you have uh, the opponent has three colors lined up in a column, but it's like a frame away from the game actually registering the clear as happening. So they die on the last frame possible for them to die. Or Raphael, so that's gonna be a big hamper. Uh, that's probably gonna be a reset, actually, unless he wants to finish this run out. I will say, since this is mentioned in the chat, if people want to do or have like a good feel of where they are, uh, Yoshi finished that a little bit late. He, his, he's probably out of contention for the world record, but 430 after stage eight is a good pace to be at. Probably five minutes even is probably like the most amount that you'd want that it's still possible But you need a lot of luck So that that's a good indication there and then uh, going into stage five because it's kind of like there's three parts to the run uh, You'll probably want that two to two and a half minute mark there 
Yeah, so we have cards here uh, entering Lunchfish, stage 7. And looks like his pace, uh, he has a workable pace here. Seems like he wants to just finish out a run. I guess a, a good way to visualize it stage by stage is you have about a 30 second leeway that gets gradually longer as you hit the end stages. Because if it was 30 seconds to every stage, that's RTA speaking, it would be exactly six minutes. But it kind of drags along a little bit farther as you go along. And the end game times that you are looking for are around the 15 to 20 second range. Oh, looks like Cars' stream stopped again. Oh yeah, dropping frames right now. Cards has had some internet issues from time to time. Hopefully it will kick back in pretty soon because he does have a pretty nice pace heading into Stage 8. So we'll try to keep you guys updated on that. But we're going to see Yoshimitsu uh, finish off this run as FFR Monty are going through some resets. So Cypher, I know we talked a little bit off stream how you did a lot of like these old puzzle games back in the day and specifically talking about Tetris Attack. Were you inspired by any of the runs before yours or was it just, hey, I enjoy this game. I'm doing speed running right now. Let's give this one a shot. Um, well, I did watch runs of other games before I really investigated puzzle game speed runs. I did come across Darkwing's 12 in-game time run on SDA. And I enjoyed watching that run, but I was like, I could probably beat this run. There's like, you know, there's some slow stages. And I, back when I was a kid, I would just play this game on endless mode for hours and hours. I just, that's how much I love the game. It's like, there's no point in it. I was just playing it on endless because I loved games. And so uh, I was like, yeah, I could pro I could see myself pushing a speed run far enough to get the record in this game. So I did it. Um, I liked that kind of like puzzle game consistency, but like doing the same thing over and over again. Uh, I liked doing that with puzzle games so much that um, Woods, which is another Super Nintendo puzzle game, and uh, I did runs of Kirby's Avalanche, which I recommend no one ever do. That was <laughs> game I've ever speed run in terms of enjoyability, and I also messed around with Dr. Mario for a little bit, but I didn't really take that anywhere. We had Yoshi accidentally hop in easy for a second there. <laughs> but, easy, uh, multi. <laughs> yeah, it, it's funny because uh, we haven't mentioned this actually. There's only three difficulties that are are on screen, and very hard's the fourth difficulty. You actually have to hold up and L on your controller to access that, and you'll get that red background. And yeah. we've had races where people accidentally didn't hold the right combinations and then have to <laughs> restart it. Or they don't notice for like four or five stages. Yeah, because it just shows, when it shows level hard, you can't distinguish hard from V hard from uh, just the level icon. Yeah, and his cards Thanks. updated in chat there. He was minus 17 on a split. Which, I guess that gives us a good indication he finished Raphael at around the 4.30 mark, but he was still 20, 20 seconds ahead? Hey, but Cards had a really, really good late game. And you can see it on the stream there, there was a freeze frame of Hookville at like 1.53. <laughs> That's rough. We got Monty on a little bit of a run right now. A little bit slower than uh, what the world record is. It's definitely still possible. When you finish Froggy at hopefully three minutes here. Oh no, he's going to get the clear. It, it, uh, we just like to stress this enough. This game's just really, really brutal. So... 
just a little bit of a slip up on your end or a little bit of bad luck, you're aiming for those 15 to 20 second times and it's so easy to get a time that's over 30 seconds. You need to be on point the entire time. <laughs> All right, we got a pretty good start on Yoshi's in there, too, as he gets an 11 second here on stage two. That's what you like to see, uh, your timer sub one minute <laughs> heading after stage two there. Let's see what he can do on Poochie here. Oh, he might get a quick... Yeah, he gets the 14 second there, so Yoshi's looking to be on a good run right now. Monty, he's on stage 7 right now at uh, almost four and a half minutes in. This run might be dead pretty soon. He might just elect to finish it out. Who knows? Nope, as soon as I say that, he resets, though. <laughs> A GDQ race of this game. I want to say it was like SGDQ 2016 or something like that. That was a really good watch. Uh, I recommend if you want some, if you want some like more commentated game, uh, go look that up on YouTube. Um, I was I was not on commentary, but I was uh, like in the on the couch crew for that, and that was like one of the most entertaining runs of that event for me. Yeah, for sure. As one of the people who was doing commentary for it, we had Cards and FFR who are here now. We had two other well-respected runners of uh, Darkwing Duck and Edo Bean, and uh, the everyone's time was so close, and there were a bunch of lead changes back and forth, and it was a really good showing from everybody. So yeah, that was SGDQ 2016, and we've... In terms of like uh, puzzle league games that have been showcased throughout, the past four SGDQs all have had a game showcased, including a uh, Pokemon Puzzle Challenge race that was 2014, and then we've also had just Pokemon Puzzle League 2015 and 2017, which done by Cards and FFR as well. You'll hear those names a lot. Those guys are both pretty heavily invested into the community. As much as I love this series, though, I like to shout out some other games because uh, we mentioned before we're from an organization called Puzzle General and we just like to showcase everything. And I do want to say if you guys are entertained by GDQs and everything, uh, AGDQ 2018 is going to be featuring Wario's Woods for the Super Nintendo. And that game this year has had its times fall pretty drastically. And we have uh, one of our best runners, PD Boo, is going to be doing the... Uh, uh, versus Calm Hard Mode, I believe it is, so you guys should check that out. Mario's Woods is a really unique puzzle game, because you control a physical character, not just a cursor or something, you control like a physical character that moves around the playing field and transports blocks and monsters in order to clear them. I'll be on commentary for that. I personally find it one of the hardest games to do as well, so I always have mass props to anyone who can master that game. But alright, we got uh, eyes on Yoshimitsu's screen right now. He can maybe get a quick kill on Raphael. Did he send enough of a follow-up garbage? Oh, but he finds the clear of the blues. He's necessarily not done yet. As long as he can get this kill follow-up right here, this should still be possible. Yeah, because he's going to finish at about 450 in, which I believe that is where Cards World Record run finished, but he had a really, really good end game. So maybe Yoshi can repeat that here, heading into the cave. Right here. Hard to stream. Oh, what can you do? <laughs> Yeah, unfortunately, ISPs can uh, ruin everything for you. But yeah, hopefully we have his back soon. He he'll probably keep us updated the whole time on things happening. So 
we got a uh, Yoshimitsu. It's looking a little bit bleak for this run right now. He didn't get the greatest hook bill start here, and he's just finding chains. Like one big difference I want to point out from this game to Pokemon Puzzle League is the AI is a lot smarter in the later games to where they'll actually set up the chains to connect with the garbage blocks. But in this game, they they might do that, but sometimes they just kind of switch around a couple blocks and just stay there. So it's just lucky to if they get a chain off of the garbage or if they don't, which if they don't, usually that can end up to a kill. Uh, the end game in cards is record run so much is because of getting all four stages to be really quick kills without a clear is like less than 0 0.01 or maybe less than 0 0.1 percent by the way i'm pulling that number totally out of my ass but that's what it feels like to me <laughs> 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 it sounds about right. I, I can't confirm or deny it, though. <laughs> yeah. Looks like Yoshi's probably just going to play through the rest of this run now. He might do a reset as soon as I say that, because that likes to be a popular theme whenever a commentator points out something. He does get an 18, though, so pretty nice stage. But as you can see, the world record's already passed. We got FFR with the start of something happening up there as well as he gets that 19 second on Pucci. He's going to be heading out of the stage at about 145, which is pretty reasonable. Which, something I like to point out about uh, FFR's play, we have mentioned he has really ridiculously fast cursor speed, and he does a really good job at sending garbage in terms of, like, mostly chains. He might not implement as many combos as you would like, but he does a pretty good job at uh, topping off the opponent. I'd say he's one of the most consistent people to where he might not get the fastest times, but he gets barely any stages that will troll him for that long. As you can see, he plays with a pretty high stack too, which could be a good or bad. Yoshi finishes his run at an 8.29 though. That might be her fastest run of the day so far. I'm not too sure. I know he had one run that got ruined by Bowser pretty severely earlier on. I feel like that is the best finished run so far. Which, despite it being a minute and a half behind world record, is a really, really solid time. It's hard to... Uh, pull off sub nines consistently, but these guys will typically do that pretty uh, consistently. By the way, I think I'm gonna head out here as I need to eat dinner. Fun and uh, enjoy commentating the rest of the Chase for the Record stint, you guys. Yeah, uh, thanks for joining us, Cypher. It was really good to have your input on everything. So uh, yeah, take care, man really enjoyed the chase of the record um streams i've watched so it was an honor to actually partake in one <clears throat> all righty so we do have ffr still going on a run pretty long right now a little bit behind pace can still make it up here he's got a pretty nice stack here if uh lunchfish can cooperate a little bit I'll probably uh, I'll call out Dark Aries. Uh, he he'll probably be helping a lot with the uh, co-commentary now. As Cipher uh, has to leave. Yeah, it's pretty accurate. I felt you two were doing a pretty good job, and every single time I want to say something, you either one of you guys was just on the ball of it. So I'm not gonna mess with perfection while it's happening. Mm-hmm. 
Well, I appreciate that. I, I do want to mention you on a question because we, we've uh, talked about this a little bit. These are the four fastest players on the leaderboard, and myself and Cypher were right behind at five and six. And as a person who mostly just watches on the outside, I know you've done attempts too, and you have a... What is your PB in the game? Don't you have like a 11 minute or a 12 minute time or something? <laughs> I don't know. I thought you got a PB recently. I did, but it's not even close to that number. Hold on. Let me pull up my splits. <laughs> well, anyways, oh, not, not even like worrying about the specific time, but as someone, you know, generally who watches more than plays, like what do you notice from these top players? Like what, what are specifically the things that they need to uh, do consistently in order to get like these uh, low seven minute times? Really, honestly, it just has to do with a lot of vision in the game, which is something I desperately lack, um, which is why my times are very slow. It, it, I mean, I'm special in the regard that I'm colorblind, so I don't get to see all these fancy combos and chains as uh, well as everybody else does. But when I do get, but when I do actually get on track and I can kind of see what they're doing, a lot of it just has to do with the fact that, um, for example, um, more casual players or somebody even a bit more above average like myself, uh, oftentimes you use uh, garbage chaining as a crutch for not being able to do very well, uh, because if um, the opponent is a lot better than you, it, it, this is more apl applicable in a game like Pokemon Puzzle League when you're on the uh, harder difficulties, maybe less so in Tetris Attack, but you're going to keep continue using the garbage in order to make up for the fact that you aren't able to find and place chains as well as people of a higher skill set. While people at this range of gameplay, they don't need that crutch. They can actually see the stack and go, if I'm going to move this triangle over, that's going to cause my stars to fall down in a manner of which I can shift this star over and it will keep continuing my chain. So it's a lot more of the fact that you don't have to think from a going up to down perspective. It's more of you can look to the left and right as well to continue the chains going. And also just due to the fact that you have a very good peripheral vision and a look ahead as well. I think actually cards, uh, one of the things that people like to bring up is the fact that cards kind of knows when his chains won't reach a certain size. And I think that's pretty accurate for basically everybody. Uh, people just like to throw out cards out there. But you'll know when you can't do a chain after a certain amount of size uh, because you just know you have very innate uh, feeling with your stack and you can tell that, okay, I've kind of screwed this up. I won't have any more blocks that are going to be able to continue what I'm doing right now. I think I've left him speechless. <laughs> it very well put there. And I, 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 I like the way that you said, uh, you know, some lower level people, they do rely on, you know, garbage clearing chains to survive. And that's one thing all of these runners do excel on is that, you know, they can uh, just do chains without the garbage because it the garbage gives you a lot of necessary time to do that stuff. But especially on very hard here, you have way less time to react to things because on this game, uh, you can see it specifically in like uh, human to human versus modes that uh, you can adjust the level of the play, which will make the blocks clear faster and just uh, raise the stacks a little bit higher as well. That's a little bit less important. But as the blocks clear faster, you have so much less time to work with. And you can, you know, bust like 15 chains out pretty easily on level one. But some people, when they transition to level 10, they have a hard time just finding, like, three chains. And I'm not sure exactly what very hard translates to in level. If I were to guess, probably around the 7 or 8 range, which is pretty fast. I would say that's fairly accurate. And levels uh, range from 1 to 10, just in case you didn't know. But while I've been talking, we got uh, Yoshimitsu on a really good run right now. 3.30 at uh, Lunchfish here. 
We'll see how he handles this. He had a pretty decent chain. Lunchfish has not too many blocks, though, so he might have to send a little bit more here. He's got a pretty favorable pattern, though. If he gets topped off, he might get the kill, which he does. 24 seconds is definitely something you can still work with. That's why you want to aim for those really, really low times at the beginning of the run. So, if he can get a pretty good Raphael here, he's looking at in exiting around the 430 mark, which is prime positioning to go for the world record. Actually, another thing that kind of came to mind, thinking more uh, what differentiates kind of like the skill levels in the genre of games, it also has to do a lot with knowing when to cut your chain. Because um, really, if we look at uh, how people improve in the game, they kind of go from not knowing how to chain to knowing how to chain, and then they kind of want to keep growing their chain so they're very large. But it's actually really detrimental to just do, a, we'll call it a mystery chain, because that's what it is where you reach a certain amount and it just turns into a question mark. I believe it's 12 or 13 uh, once you get past that point and start doing that. If you were to continue doing that in a speedrun of this game, or even in a versus mode, it oftentimes actually ends up harming you because there's so much time that you're actually giving your opponent to continue poking at you with smaller chains and garbage. So one of those things that uh, people of a higher skill set have is that ability to know when to actually cut off a chain and send the right amount of garbage. They'll pay attention to their opponent's stack and they'll see, oh, they're pretty high up. If I cut this, it's gonna drop when they raise it one or two more and that's gonna really hurt them because they're all of a sudden gonna be overstacked right now. Mm -hmm. uh, so if we go back and look at Yoshi's screen right now, unfortunately, I believe he had a chance to kill uh... Whoever stage nine is, I forget the characters all the time in this game, and I've played it so much, I don't know why. But he could have got a, a little bit of a quicker kill, but he settled for a 23, I believe. So this is still possible, though that uh, clear on Piranha is not going to help at all. He'll probably get the follow up kill right here since there's no chain dropping. Yeah, immediate kill. Which I don't think we've actually described stop time all too much. And no. since this. Since this pace is, I think, dead at this point, it might have the smallest chance at world recording. We'll see as Kamek comes, but uh, stop time is the mechanic that makes you die in this game. When your screen gets all the way filled, you won't die immediately because you have what's called stop time. And depending on your level or how far you are into the match will determine how long that stop time lasts for. And it can be extended by doing a certain chain number or a certain uh, combo. So if you have like an opponent clearing uh, the garbage and they were they just barely did it and had like barely any stop time. If they don't have a chain follow up immediately, you'll just see them die very quick. Kind of like how Kamek did there. Yeah, stop time is one of those mechanics that just kind of really pushes how well you can do in the game. Uh, more so in a versus perspective, or at least in Pokemon Puzzle League, where you can get hit a lot harder. But it, it really goes to show how well you can do things. Um, with players with really fast cursor speed like FFR, you really get to see them stretch how quickly they can move panels around to get those clears in the short amount of time span they still have when they are just encumbered with garbage. Well, we have Yoshimitsu maybe on the pace to try to get the first sub-8 for the day, though, which is definitely a great milestone. Like I mentioned earlier, only these four players have a sub-8 time. And there it is, there it actually. 7.52, so pretty respectable time from Yoshi. He's going to have the best time of the day. And I believe uh, I should bring up the exact... Uh, times that might beat one of the players times here oh no it ties ffr's ffr has a 752 as a pb as well so yoshi playing pretty good for the most part and that's what we expect he he's definitely someone who can find the clears the fastest out of all four of them i want to say yeah especially since he's really relatively new to speedrunning it's probably been mentioned earlier but uh yoshi's probably the newest speedrunner 
to this game, really. He plays often. Uh, I believe he's from Brazil. He plays uh, the uh, person versus person PvP very often. But uh, he really didn't get too much of a challenge until he found the uh, Fetcher's Attack Online Discord, where they do uh, just versus online, either with a clone called Panel Attack or with emulators. And then, uh, because the communities are pretty intertwined, it got him into speedrunning the game itself, at which point he kind of just took the record with nobody really expecting it unless they were following him, so. Yeah, shout-outs to the people at the uh, Tetris Attack Online community. They, they've revived this game that, you know, we've been speedrunning it for a little while, but I know a lot of people are asking about Versus, and this uh, clone that they made Panel Attack hit, it has some work to be done, but it is, like, has very low latency and a lot of people have been enjoying it and we've had tournaments with 20 plus people which is pretty cool to see from a game that was released over 20 years ago yeah it's pretty funny because a lot of people like and get into the game because of the uh versus aspect but then when you try to go online a lot of us devolved into speedrunning it because there really wasn't a consistent way to actually do versus matches beyond going to an event such as a PAX or GDQ or anything like that. And now we've finally reached a point where we can reliably have versus matches. So they're kind of becoming more of a, a norm at this point here. So it's kind of just the revolving circle of what's being popular. Which I will say, if you do like that versus aspect, uh... I'm sure people watching can uh, link this if someone wants it, but check out that community because online versus matches happen every single day. It's a pretty popular Discord right now. And we've been reaching out to more in-person events. We usually always have a Puzzle League versus tournament uh, at the GDQs. If you're going to ask why not Tetris Attack, this game is so laggy on versus. We've had matches on level 10, which is the hardest, go for longer than... Uh, the max out timer, which is uh, 9.59, and probably five minutes past that. We've had uh, one best of three game go for about 30 minutes because both of the players were just so skilled at it. But we have things like GDQs, PAXs always have them, and then uh, we've been reaching out to more things, like just, uh, I don't know, generally even some like Smash tournaments. We went to a... Uh, event called Super Famicom and had a bunch of puzzle tournaments, including uh, Puzzle League, Tetris, Puyo Puyo, things like that. Hopefully we can see these get bigger and bigger down the road, but uh, the speedrunning scenes have been pretty popular, I'd say, over the past year. Uh, specifically, Tetris Attack and Puzzle League have about the same amount of representation. And in terms of like games in the puzzle genre, I believe both are in the top five as far as, like, runs done over time like trailing behind portal and uh i forget what else is up there i mean even then it's still um you'll oftentimes see pokemon puzzle league break into the top 10 games on srl and i believe on even speedrun.com it is pretty high up there with regards to like uh activity with its leaderboards there so it's definitely one of the most popular puzzle, you know, or action puzzle games, I would say. I always like to point this out, like, I'd say speedrunning in general had a huge peak in 2013. Uh, Speedruns Live was one of the premier sites then, and there were so many people who were picking up the actual races, because before SRL, I don't think races were ever even done, you know, it was just offline attempts, you know, some streaming here and there, but SRL kind of made that big. And then with channels like Speed Gaming here, we combine that with the uh, tournament aspects, which there's so many events going on on this channel. You guys should follow it if you haven't yet. But uh, this game, or P Puzzle League in specific, there was a group of people in 2013 that used to race this game every single day, which helped add to the popularity a little bit. Shout out to uh, the crew back in 2013. Yeah, I mean, if you look at the history of uh, kind of this, at least it's it's more relatable to Pokemon Puzzle League, but since there's so much overlap with the players itself, it started off as just those daily races that were happening and people would kind of join in. 
And then we kind of made a little community in a Skype group. And it's continued to evolve with more and more people. And then it got so big that uh, well, you couldn't even start a Skype call at all because there was too many people in the actual channel itself. <laughs> and then when Discord came out, me and Forky decided to kind of shift the community over there. And then we decided to branch out to make it more than just uh, Pokemon Puzzle League since everybody who plays Pokemon Puzzle League loves puzzle games in general. And now it's grown into Puzzle General itself, which I believe has over 400 active members uh, in the Discord right now. So it just from like maybe a handful to a dozen people just doing daily races of Pokemon Puzzle League into what it is right now. And now the fact that we have races on outlets such as Speed Gaming is just really impressive in just the span of a couple of years. Yeah, it's been explained in chat a little bit, but uh, yeah, Cards is just having a little bit of issues on his end due to like Storm and whatnot, so he's going to keep us updated because I'm sure he's still doing attempts on his end, but we'll let you guys know if, or he will because we've seen him talking in chat. He'll keep us updated if he gets something good. But yeah, I, I just want to say, you know, big thanks to anyone supporting uh, speedrunning in whole or puzzle games. It, it's great to see all these games just being played to this day. And you see that a lot with speedrunning. It just revives all these uh, games that we thought people never played anymore. And you got like hundreds of people enjoying them to this day. It, it's a great age that we live in right now with gaming. I see card stream pop up every once in a while. So it, it, his connection's fighting. Yeah. It'll win the battle eventually. I think he mentioned that even because um, he's also trying to just use his uh, cell data to tether because that's uh, done well as a backup in the past. But even that is uh, not being all that well because of the storms that are happening in his area. So it's just uh, pretty unfortunate timing. Well, he is back for the time being, and he's going to get that 11-second stage, so it's good to see him back. Yeah, that's the uh, RNG manipulation at work, uh, for those of you who just joined or maybe have very short memory like I do. Uh, Cards does an RNG manipulation where he looks at the blinking of the Yoshi's eyes in order to start off with the exact same seed, and he gets to clear it in 11 seconds. If that doesn't happen, he just resets. Which I believe he is the only person to implement that strat right now because it is very, very young and it only works for a handful of stages. He has it for only two different stages on Tetris Attack, but I know he's routed it up to something like, I want to say five stages on Panel to Pawn, but it's so hard to keep it consistent throughout the entire run. So he does it for the first couple on Panel to Pawn and then just plays normally like you would for the rest of the game. Yeah, and it's fairly interesting because I don't believe that anybody in the Japanese speedrunning community uh, even does the RNG manipulation that Cards found out, so. Which is a shame. I, I, don't, know, I don't know how active the Japanese community is for this game. They definitely have some pretty good times, especially since they have the record for paneled upon and i think some other categories and other games but i'm not the person who's kept up well enough with that stuff yeah i'm not too sure i, I do know that ffr managed to bop a japanese player for easy mode in the gamecube panel paneled upon i believe it is but uh, any records they do have are generally pretty long-standing. Uh, they've also kind of been there for a couple of years, so... Mm. It's a tricky game. Sometimes the records last for quite a while, and then sometimes they get beat within the next day, even. Like, we've had uh, Pokemon Puzzle League very hard. The second uh, hardest difficulty... Uh, myself, I set the record one time, and Cards was like, Oh, that's nothing goes and beats it the next day <laughs> and it was like the record before that stood for you know over a year so it wasn't like it was a bad time or anything 
is just, you know, sometimes you just get lucky enough or you're playing hot. That's just how it works. Yep. Actually, if I remember correctly, there was a little bit of a, I guess you could call it an esports scene for this game in Japan, but it kind of never really took off. Really? That's interesting. How long ago was that? Oh, it was fairly long. I remember reading it on like a, one of one of those StarCraft websites, maybe Team Liquid or something. It was, it, it's a fairly old and long-standing website, but they had an article about uh, Panel de Pawn and how it did have a little bit of a uh, versus scene in Japan, but uh, it, it didn't go very large, mainly due to the fact that based all most of their players were very level in skill set, and the games would just keep lasting on too long. So I don't think they really did anything like level 10 versus mode or anything like that. Wait, they played on lower level? Yeah, I, I, I believe they played on lower levels. Because I, I can't believe that if they were playing on level 10 that their matches would last like 10 minutes. Or the article was just embellishing things to embellish things. This is an interesting game because... To give you a little bit of like a puzzle background or something, this game, I'd say as a whole, compared to any other competitive puzzle games, is probably one of the least regarded ones for the fact that there are huge time variances on the match. And, you know, you can play at low level and have the two best players in the world literally never die. But you bump it up to level 10, and then you have matches that can end at 10 seconds or 3 minutes. Kind of like the speedrun, believe it or not. <laughs> yep. Yeah, it's very but, different uh, in comparison to a game like Puyo, where a skill has everything to do with the versus match. Mm -hmm. Puyo has much con more consistent times, but... It it's cool because you have such skilled players who do verses on this game as well. And uh, it, it takes a lot to play. It's funny. Uh, you talk about APM for some games and uh, Puzzle League is right up there with some of the fastest because the cursor movement for some of the players can get really, really insane. I don't know specific numbers. But uh, I wouldn't say StarCraft numbers. I don't think anything compares to StarCraft. But if you take the game, let's say, like, uh, Melee, I'm pretty sure some of the top players in Puzzle League have faster APN than the fastest in Melee. Yeah, I'd believe that. It's, if, if you think about it, there's just so much actions that you have to do in a very quick motion. If you were to take one panel from one edge to the other edge, there's actually, in Pokemon Puzzle League, there is a custom kind of test that people make where they try to uh, airwalk panel to create a clear that is otherwise impossible and you have to be fast enough to move the panel without it dropping to the bottom and if you can do that that that's you are up there in terms of cursor speed and skill level Alright, so I guess back on the action right now, we have uh, a lot of people kind of involved in a run right now. Uh, FFR and Monty both on stage 6, both at very similar paces, I want to say. Uh, Monty's getting a little bit trolled right now, let's see what happens on FFR's side, but they're both on, you know, some pretty good paces. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. And... Unfortunately, as with, uh, because this game is so RNG heavy, it's very often for a good pace to go, which is why in any, whenever there is always a speedrun race of this game, it's never over up until the very last boss is defeated, because we have seen it where it will, uh, the person in the back will all of a sudden beat them because of the fact that they got unlucky at the final boss. Ooh, Monty almost got a really quick fight on Lunchfish there. Unfortunately, he found the uh, stack lower at just the right time. If he can get this kill right now, he still might have a chance to get something going, which he is going to finish it off. Hey. 
It's funny because uh, in terms of speedruns for this series, this one is definitely the more consistent one to get kills. But I still think it has like a bigger variance in terms of how the AI uh, like makes its moves. Like Puzzle League, for the most part, we believe there's like an AI spike in the middle of the game, but the AI typically uh, does the same thing as every single stage, just gets a little bit faster. And in this one, that's kind of the same case, but through for one through eight, uh, I feel like towards the end of that, there are huge jumps to how fast Raphael gets, and then you have a whole different way they're programmed for the last four stages. And even then, from stage nine to stage twelve, it, there's like a huge variance because Bowser is just the biggest troll ever. Yeah, instead of having one or I guess in Pokemon Puzzle League, you can really just. Uh, consider two spikes in skill. There's that spike at around Tracy, and then there's that spike for just Mewtwo itself at the very end. In this game, there's a lot more. It's kind of uh, uneven, in a sense. Yeah, we got both FFR and Monty on Hookville right now. But it looks like both of them kind of got trolled a little bit. Monty's going to finish at 21, which is pretty good. But they're both about to be eclipsing the six-minute mark, which Monty already did. And it's looking pretty slim, because there's three stages left for each person. So they could compete for the best time, though FFR just takes a reset there. Yoshi with the crazy combo clears right there. Alright, we got Yoshimitsu on a pretty good run right now, it's looking like too. It's always, you know, the really, really early game, it's hard to tell, but... You never know if he keeps rolling with that. You gotta play good every single stage though, you can't let up at all. Yeah, Monty's going to finish out this run. It'll probably give him some more confidence if he can finish Kamek and Bowser in some reasonably good times. But yeah, here's Yoshimitsu getting that 14 second on Flying Wiggler, and he's on some pretty good pace right now. Yeah, he's pretty much on a roll right now. And Monty's done with Kamek there, so on to the final boss, Bowser. He should, if Bowser ends up being good here, probably have the second fastest time for the day. I can't speak much for Karts since his stream's kind of been on and off. It looks like it's been pretty consistent. Let's not jinx it right now, though. Hopefully the storms will go away. Uh -huh. Wow, Monty with some really nice uh, five combos right there. And an eight. Oh, he, yeah, he might get this kill on Bowser here. Oh, he's going to find the reds. That was unfortunate. It's like Bowser's cursor speed's so fast, it, it you can just get super unlucky. And he's going to have those purples drop into place there, so it just gives Bowser even more time to react. He should probably die here, though. Third tier, dude. Wow. What is this guy? Unbelievable. It's crazy. Bowser gets a third tier, but Monty also got a nine combo. It's insane. You don't really see that one often. 48 seconds, that is a fairly decent time. So yeah, he'll finish up with the sub nine here. And then we can turn our focus back over to Yoshimitsu right now, who is he's got a pretty solid run going into this too. At about 345 heading into Lunchfish here. Uh, right around the beginning of the world record pace, I want to say. It's hard to compare it to the current world record, because, like we've mentioned before, uh, the end game is just so ridiculous on it. Fifteen seconds, still doing fairly good here. That's the perfect time you want to shoot for right now. Those fifteen second fights are really amazing in the uh, late game. 
I just love looking how each one of these players uh, find their stuff. Yoshi relies a lot more on just uh, doing clears really quickly and uh, getting like lag chains and multiple combos. You look at someone like Cards, he doesn't really do too many lag chains, but he finds five combos so consistently back to back, which uh -huh. five combos you can argue are pretty optimal because a four combo is three blocks wide, so they won't stack up on top of each other. But when you do a five combo, it's four blocks wide, and those will they can't fit side by side. They're gonna stack on top. So five combos are pretty good. You can throw in one four combo just for fun. Yoshi going for a pretty big chain here. Might pay off. He's got hook bill at a pretty high stack. There's going to be some stack shaking, though. Dang. And that's going to... Gets the form. ...lead to that clear. It's always fun when the game tries to catch up and it just starts popping all the garbage one after another. Just like rapid fire. But uh, 30 seconds. It's slower pace, but it's... Still really good, relatively speaking. Anyways, I'm not too certain if on world record pace, but uh, he's gonna need god stage after god stage, though it might be impossible at this point. Those 30 second stages really, really do kill. Like in general, you take those if it's like a regus format. But man, grinding world record, it can just be really tough, and you really do want those sub 20s whenever you can get them. But yeah, just a little bit short on garbage again this stage, and uh, Piranha finding some chains, so that's gonna knock this out of contention already. Yeah. So we might see him reset, he might just finish it again. I wish I had more of the knowledge of how much time it took uh, RTA in between stages, which I guess we could just time that on our own right now. But it varies from stage to stage because you have a uh, you have character select screens for every stage, and then you have little cutscenes you gotta skip for the later stages too. And this uh like uh fade out I believe is a little bit longer than standard. I could be wrong on everything though. Who knows? <laughs> just roll with it. We're supposed to look like we know what we're talking about. I've played Pokemon Puzzle League too long and probably get influenced a little bit by that because there's some different things that happen on that game where you, you're getting like badges and then you got random sequences like fighting Mewtwo at the end. That's actually like the, the quickest transition, I want to say. Yep. It's pretty funny. A lot of people play Pokemon Puzzle League because it's... It, I think it's because of the fact that it's so inconsistent and you're just trying to make the best of it. But this game really is a lot more consistent in trying to do something. It also helps that it's like much, much shorter. And there we go. We got you, May, with the information in chat there. 10 seconds for the first eight stages and a little below 20 for the last. So yeah, that's why you gotta have a good pace going into the end, because you don't want the time to deceive you a little bit. And wow, Bowser! Pulling off the 10 chain there, pretty casual, no big deal. Yeah, the difficulty spike on Bowser is just ridiculous. Buddy gets a 31 second clear. Completing 8 minutes and 44 seconds. Is that... Now the best time? I forget now. No, no, we've we've had a sub eight. We had yeah, a sub eight. Gotcha, gotcha. Which Yoshimitsu definitely has finished the most runs from uh what I can recall, and has the fastest one. He's looking like the most consistent runner for the time being, and I I just don't think uh Monty FFR have had that uh 
great beginning game to look forward to. We haven't seen a lot of end games for them, so you can't really judge from them how that would go yet. They, they finished some runs, and unfortunately for cards, we'll, we'll see some attempts, or we'll see an offline world record, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm seeing in chat, um, wondering how a time of 701 was achieved. It really just has to do a lot with the right amount of luck. Um, because you don't end up with the same stack every single time you play. So a lot of it is on yourself to try to make the best of the situation. So it comes down to knowing as when to cut off your chains, when to do them first off, when to do combos. Hoping that the AI is in that one one part of its programming that it will not find the clear in time. There's a lot of factors that you yourself can influence, but there's a lot of factors that you can't influence. So it's really just trying to beat RNG at its own game. Mm -hmm. And you do got to play a certain number of attempts, but you got to know the skills as well, which I will say definitely for Yoshi and cards who have had the world record out of, as of recent, they are definitely the better players for this category as well. As you can see, uh, both, I'd say probably uh, manage combos a little bit better, not to take anything away from the other two. Yeah, I mean, that just also happens to go in play styles as well, because I mean, if this was stage clear, for example, there, we would be talking completely opposite. FFR would be dominating this whole category more than likely. Although we haven't really seen Yoshi do stage clear, but if it was uh, on the knowledge that we have right now, FFR is just pretty much godly at the stage clear mode of the game. So it's it's just the way his play style is. It works a lot better in a stage clear environment than it does in the versus computer. Mm-hmm. Oh, and we're getting around to that time again. Uh, we know we have a lot of newer viewers in chat who haven't either uh, seen this game before. So I want to welcome you guys to Chase for the Record. Uh, we're taking four of the best runners for different games. This uh, iteration happens to be Tetris Attack. Uh, this is a swap three game that uh, you combine swapping multiple blocks in a row to get chains and combos. The uh, category that they're doing is versus com very hard, which you have to be 12 stages as fast as you can by sending garbage to your opponent and topping off their screen. So we have the four best runners duking it out right now. We haven't had too much luck to begin with so far, but we still got a whole nother hour to see if these guys can come up with something. Yeah, and if you are new here as well, um, some quick terminology. A combo is when you match four or more at once. A chain is when you match three or more at once, but it's in quick succession. So whenever you see when their screens have that times two or times three or anything like that, that's considered a chain. Uh, the stack is just their literal game field uh, filled with the panels. Uh, the garbage are those blocks with the faces that will drop on top of them. And that's your uh, too long, didn't read terminology right there. <laughs> well put, well put. So yeah, uh, the gist of this basically, if you're going to look at the end game time for each stage, the world record averages about 16 and a half seconds per stage. And they're going to be looking to probably get around, you know, 11 to 12 second ones early on. Or if they don't manage to get around that average, you can try to do it later on. It's just a lot more luck dependent, even though later opponents do play more aggressive. So... In a, in a sense, you're more likely to get crazy times, like even sub 10s, but you should never uh, rely on it completely. You want to make sure your beginning game's pretty solid, and that's why we see a lot of stage 1 resets or stage 3 resets. In particular, you're going to be noticing cards of the heart resetting a lot on stage 1. He's the only runner that does an RNG manipulation. Uh, what he does is he waits for the blinking of Yoshi's eyes uh, to match up with uh, a timing that he does out loud. I think it's just a couple seconds that he times out. And uh, whenever he starts the first stage, it will have the exact same panels every single time, which means that he can get an 11 second clear. If he doesn't get those conditions, he's just going to keep resetting. The 
That's a really good blarg right there. 12 seconds for Yoshimitsu. FFR also doing pretty good with a 17 seconds on... Uh, I forget that guy's name, but it's stage 4. Oh, was it Flying Wiggler? I might have... Yeah, yeah, yeah it was uh, Flying, Flying Wiggler. Wiggler. Flying Wiggler. That's his name. It's so hard. I, I'll remember their names or forget them sometimes. Or I'll just forget specifically what stage. So I'll, like, call out to the future and be like, Yeah, stage 9. I forget who that is, but... <laughs> But yeah, uh, both players on the right side of your screen here have some pretty good runs going. Yoshimitsu a little bit farther along. He's going to finish with the 22, which isn't too bad. And he's probably right around the world record pace right now. But here's where all the fun comes along, man. Raphael. I've seen him have quite a few stages against him, like over 20 seconds. Just because he likes to clear garbage blocks, nothing more than that. Mm -hmm. Looks like Monty's doing pretty good as well. He had a 15 second stage one, and now he has a 20 second stage two, so there's some really strong early game happening from these runners. Yeah, Rafael playing with the high stack. That is going to be it for him. So we have Yoshimitsu right under five minutes right now. So this is not impossible, but he's going to probably need sub 15 or even lower for every single one of these stages. So time to pray to the RNG gods. Which the opponents do play with higher stacks, so they're going to be cutting off their chains a little bit more. And this looks kind of good. He's going to have to lower the right side of his screen. This Oh, no, he's found the blues the there. But yes, it's 22 second clear. I mean, it, it's not that great for trying to beat that 7 minute and 1 second time, but it's still overall really good. Yeah, I think it's, uh, it might be impossible at this point. It's hard to judge. I think you want to at least be at like 540 here. I don't run at the caliber of these runners though, so my judgment can be pretty off at, at most points. Let's see, he might be able to get this kill pretty soon. And that's the good thing Yoshimitsu has on his side, since he does spam combos pretty quick. The less screen shake that happens when the opponents drop their block, they're going to typically die quicker. So good stuff to him. Still at about six and a half minutes. I, I will definitely say this is dead now, but he might be able to get the fastest time on stream so far. Yeah, I mean, one of the nice things about this game, at least from a newcomer perspective, is that you don't have to necessarily be very good at large chains. It's okay if you do combos to kind of crutch for that as well. Uh, you're obviously not going to be clearing uh, the game at this speed and caliber, but you're still going to be able to get wins off, so... This game is a lot more forgiving than any other game in the series, so... Way less forgiving, but probably one of the harder world records, especially with... It, cards just got the 701 last week, which is really funny. Warming up for this, so... Might have wasted all the good luck here, but we'll see. We still got plenty of time to see one of these runners break out and get something good. Kamek's ruining, ruining all the potential of setting a new stream best here, though, with that 57 second. That 752 is going to remain the best time right now, but he's probably going to still finish out the run. There's just something satisfying about this game. If you if you had a good run leading up to the last, you know, two to three stages, you most likely always finish it unless you, like, end up dying or just something severely unlucky happens. Yeah, it's just the way that uh, RNG can, can can decide what to do. And uh, Bowser's pretty encumbered there, but he does get the stars to start clearing off that garbage there. I 
30 second clear. I, that's pretty good. Yeah, pretty solid. Like, Bowser is definitely the person who's going to have the highest average of a time compared to everyone else. That's why you want as much leeway as possible heading to then. But yeah, Yoshimitsu cranking out these runs. He's getting enough practice. I think this is good for him because he's getting a lot of feels for this end game. Like, his beginning game is shown to be uh, pretty consistent to where he can maintain world record pace. And it just all comes down to that end game. And the more practice he's getting with it tonight, maybe he, he'll he get that luck eventually. And I don't know. I really want to see a sub-7 in this game. Like, I remember a couple of years ago, we thought sub-8 was almost impossible when uh, Cypher still had the uh, world record. And then Cards put in some work, got a 748, I want to say, or something along that area. Brought it down even more, and now we're we're one second away. Yeah, and I believe actually that run of cards is on SDA right now as the current video for Tetris Attack. You might be correct. Either that or a 720 run, one of those two. So now we get to see all the uh, beginning game trolls right now. Everyone basically at stage one and two. FFR on stage three, though, so he's a little bit out in front right now. Let's see if uh, Blame Poochie will strike again. Though he didn't have the greatest start there. He finds an eight to make up for it, though. So that was a pretty decent follow-up. He's going to lose some time for just getting that chain off a little bit slow. But dude, Pucci had those uh, hearts lined up and just kind of like went away from him. Like, uh, I don't want to do this clear right now. I'll go back down. I see my commentaries rubbing off on you if you're starting to refer them by shapes. I figure I'd be a little bit nice to you because I, <laughs> I noticed that a little bit. I'm like, well, you know, let's let's do some shapes for yeah. our colorblind friends. Yeah, if anybody in chat's wondering, I'd like to refer the panels as shapes because that's as I see them. I don't really see them as the color that they are. I mean, I guess the circle's green and the heart's red, obviously, but like that triangle is really just gray to me, although I would assume <laughs> it's like a teal. That that's something else I need to do, too, is start calling them panels. I don't think I've ever described them once as panels, and I can blame Pokemon Puzzle League for that. <laughs> yeah, they kind of ruined the naming convention there by calling them blocks. Which but they're I mean, square. I mean, you, you like tell your brain that they are blocks, but then they're not blocks at all. <laughs> I think it's more because of the fact that they were... They were kind of more probably pushing on the 3D mode, at which case they are actual blocks because they're cubes in the game itself. Or at least some sort of 3D shape right there. So mm -hmm. it, it's probably more accurate to call them blocks because they're not really panels per se. Oh, Lakitu. This guy, I feel like, is the biggest troll in the run. It's just... He, he plays with a very low stack most of the time, so you gotta bust out a big chain and combo. And then he just likes to make clears, kind of like on Monty's screen at the bottom left there. You know, Monty sent a very decisive chain and some combos to top him off, but he's just like, nah, I'll play with a low stack. Also, I'm seeing in chat um, that calling him as panels is because the game was handled upon. I wouldn't necessarily say that's a good reason for it, because... The Japanese language is pretty finicky. As I've recently learned, they like to use an English-sounding word for something, but the definition is not does not actually match up to the English word itself. There's actually a Wikipedia article on it. I can't remember what it's specifically called, but they really like doing that, where they'll use an English word to describe something, but that word, but that English word doesn't actually mean what they have it mean in the Japanese language. So just because it says panel upon doesn't necessarily mean that they had the word panel as in the English definition of it in mind. Yeah, I would I would consider it maybe a false friend of sort of I'm I can't remember what it's called right now, but um 
I know the example of it, um, since I was actually talking about it with somebody. If anybody watches Food Wars, there is a term called perfect trace. And the word trace in that meaning doesn't necessarily mean what they want it to mean in English. That's what it is. Wase Ego, thank you, Toretta, in chat for knowing what I was talking about. All right, I guess it's time to uh, pay attention to Yoshi Mitsu again, rolling through that beginning game. Kind of been the theme for him. And he's got a pretty decent start again so far. Uh, midway through Blarg at three minutes in is pretty good. He can close out this match pretty soon here if he sent the appropriate follow-up. He's a couple lines short, though. Which Blarg does not have any blocks, but he's going to do... No. <laughs> oh, almost did it with the hearts uh, right there. Oh, that's hilarious. That's like something I see myself do. You just raise your stack too high, then you don't realize you're topped off and end up killing yourself. But yeah, a little bit of a long stage there. It's going to set him back a little bit, but he's still definitely on pace. And he gets a really nice five combo on the end of his chain there. Oh, yeah. Lunchfish wow. was playing around with uh, the different blocks there, and it's going to be a 12-second fight. That's much needed. That catches him up a lot. It's also crazy to think about that a 20-second stage is slow in comparison, because overall, it, it it's not slow. It's really fast, considering how... A casual, for example, can clear the stage, or even if you get unlucky, how long it can take to clear a stage. So for 20 seconds, 26 seconds to be considered quote unquote slow, but then for him to also get a 12 seconds right after is phenomenal. Ooh, Raphael playing with the high stack. He's gonna find the diamonds though, and delay this a little bit more. I don't see any media chain follow ups though. Nope. Yeah, so. 29 second there, not the best, but yeah, he's at that four and a half minute range. So let's see how these end stages go for him. I think this might be the best entrance that he's had so far. But I'm not sure. Because generally when I'm at least met, at least noticing it, he's normally like 450 and above when he finishes the stage before hook bill. Oh, he's got a decent start here, though. Hook Bill's finding some chains now, unfortunately. Let's see if he's in enough as Hook Bill lowers his stacks. This might be enough if he doesn't find anything. No, but he gets the hearts. Commentator's curse. But it doesn't look like he has anything right now. Oh, uh, second tier. <laughs> Why, Hookbill, why are you doing this to us? If he's doing some more chains, unfortunately, this is going to all kill the run right now. As an 8 chain, a 9 chain, is he going to go for 10? He does. Crazy. God, I'm used to Bowser getting 10 chains, but Hookbill, please. In the meantime, though, Cards is actually on Hookbill as well right now. Kind of like a similar pace that Yoshi had, but... so. Cards is going to need to pull out some super quick times in order to get this quick kill here. But yeah, Hookbill clearing his garbage as well. Just going to answer some quick questions in chat. Um, the reason you might see Yoshi or anybody else wait to activate their chains is because they're looking at the opponent, trying to see if there's a point to continue with their garbage or not. Because you don't want to actually do overkill since it does waste time. And the exclamation mark or shock blocks they will create garbage that um, it. whenever you clear regular garbage, like for example on Monty's screen right now, you'll see that it, it goes and clears all of the garbage at once. What a shock block garbage does is actually s just puts a line through it. So the garbage clear will reach that shock block and it will not go through it. So any other garbage on top of it will not get cleared. And uh, it really hurts in the later stages, especially in uh, versus with a human or a friend or anything like that because you really you severely limit what you can actually do in that situation there mm -hmm. and on the top of all that 
uh ta or tetra's attack rather uh has a little bit of a weird mechanic when you're sending garbage that when you get your chain done you gotta wait at least like a second or longer to send your next one or else it'll delay it a little bit if you start a chain or a combo a little bit beforehand then uh, your opponent's not going to receive your initial garbage that you sent, and uh, maybe they'll end up raising their stack and having more blocks to work with or just numerous different options. So typically when they send that first string of garbage, they're just going to wait just a little bit longer and then maybe do some quick follow-ups with like some five or uh, four combos afterward. It looks like Cards is uh, doing pretty good uh, beyond the stream kind of being a bit stuttering, which uh, it's out of our control. His internet is just having some issues due to some weather-related things. Apparently pretty big storms, but uh, he could get really lucky on Bowser here and end up with a fairly good time. I don't think sub-8 probably possible at this point, but still overall pretty good time can be had. Yeah, to uh, answer a question by uh, Wervern in chat, uh, yes, people do use emulator for the run. Specifically, I'm pretty sure Yoshimitsu is doing emulator right now. Uh, most of the SNES emulators uh, work pretty fine for the most part. Uh, so, you know, we have a good amount of them. But I guess, according to the leaderboard, he is the only person in the top 12 runners that does emulator runs for it. Which, I'm pretty sure, personally talking to him, he prefers to do uh, runs without emulator. I just don't think he has a current setup to do so. Also, I'm not entirely sure, but I don't know if he's actually using a controller. I remember Blinzer mentioning in our panel attack tournament that we had with the Tetris Attack Online Discord that he actually plays with keyboard in panel attack itself, and that he's actually a lot faster with the controller. So I'm not sure if that's the case with him playing right now, but if this is only just on keyboard, which he's relatively new-ish too, these are still really impressive times in gameplay. <laughs> which is crazy, because yeah, he has mentioned he's better on controller, and I'm like, Man, you're already good enough on keyboard. I don't want to see what this guy looks like on controller. <laughs> All right. Oh, with the nine combo there that and Yoshi's was, yeah. at the end, though. Nice. But Lakitu is going to get that immediate clear and Yoshi's going to reset. I knew he was going to. <laughs> it's like it's the first stage. If the opponent re or makes it clear like nine out of ten times, you're going to reset. Sometimes you won't. It just makes no sense not to, since it's literally the very first stage. Oh yeah, I should mention, as you may said in chat, he did get a PB today, so make that another emulator time that's in the top 10. But yeah, any any emulator that's considered good enough for SRL, I'm pretty sure the community considers it good enough as well, so. I think basically you use like SNES 9X or SNES or BSNES or BizHawk, whatever the front end for that one is called right now. Uh, just nothing like uh, ZSNES, which is really old and not accurate in the slightest. Yeah, I'd say SNES 9X is probably one of the go-tos. Just overall, pretty good emulator. But yeah, I, I, a lot of the appeal with speedrunning, though, is people have stuck around with these old games. So a lot of people have either kept the consoles that they had when they were younger, or they just, you know, they play on emulator first, and they're like, you know what, I'm sick of dealing with this because, you know, there might be a little bit of input lag or other issues. Uh, graphical issues, sound issues, and then go out and buy a console and play on that. Which I'd recommend it for this game. I think some emulators have a little bit of trouble on uh, 
Tetris attack. I know some people have had some sound issues, I think is the big thing I've heard. Yeah, overall, a lot of people, they have a SNES, and they just... It, capturing is not all that expensive as it used to be a couple years ago, and there's a lot more good resources on it, so a lot of people just kind of go into that. I mean, if we if we think about it, FFR was getting really good times in Pokemon Puzzle League, and all of his runs were just an iPad, just held <laughs> up to his TV and be or on a table or somewhere, and they were being recorded like that. So, oh, the, those are the classic ones. We, no, we finally met, got a capture card, so now he has a pretty pretty respectable stream, as we see here. I mean, he lives in the part of Canada where internet is not that great, but in, in such a size, it really doesn't matter. If we think about it, the original game was only 240p, so. But uh, we got some decent runs from him as well as Monty right now, both of them a stage apart. FFR getting a little bit hung up on Froggy here. Hopefully he's going to be able to clean this up, which he does at 27 seconds. But yeah, Monty, really good start here on Blark. He hasn't cleared a lot of his blocks, but he does find the yellows immediately, unfortunately. I think he can still get a follow-up here, probably. Let's see. Nice. 21 seconds. Well, this mid game, I feel like, has just been pretty trolly for most of them for the entirety of this event so far. Uh, mm -hmm. Blarg and Raphael and uh, Lunchfish, in specific, these six through eight stages, we've seen definitely some stages go to 25 to 30 seconds. As we've seen uh, for both FFR and Monty right now, Monty's getting trolled on Lunchfish, and hopefully, FFR is going to be able to get over this obstacle. I'm just going to point out, because uh, I see the discussion in chat right now, the reason Zed SNES is not considered accurate is because of the fact that it ran games so well that many years ago. It has a lot of this design decisions that go for playability uh, compared to actual emulation of the system itself. Uh, a lot of the design decisions were this, and doing it like the SNES does, is too much, and it'll cause the game to be slow. Therefore, I'm going to do it in this way, because it's faster. And that's really why it's... E even if it runs games uh, fine, and it looks fine, it's just not running accurate, and therefore it's not trust... It, you can't trust the run to be duplicated on anything else. Alright, so we got Monty going into the cave a little bit over five minutes right now. He's going to basically need the god run at this point in time. He almost got a pretty good start up, though. Unfortunately, he drops his chain a little bit too quick. And uh, Hookbill's chaining away. This might not be the best start for Monty. Yeah, I think he still needs a lot more garbage to top off Hookville here, and he's doing chains and clearing uh -huh. garbage. Yeah, I think that's going to pretty much kill the run for him right now. But yeah, if you guys are enjoying watching this uh, broadcast right now, um uh, just speedrunning in general make sure to follow this channel and any of the other speed gaming channels there's lots of content that's going on uh speedrun tournaments marathons specifically one that i want to point out next month that's or not next month the, the end of this month that's happening is the rta in japan marathon it's like a uh, Japan's premier speedrunning marathon. You guys should check that out. They're going to have an English restream, I'm pretty sure, going on on this channel or some other channel. Could be wrong. Yeah, and but the event is actually really uh, 
crazy when you think about it because it's just purely for the Japanese community. They come together and they just speedrun games. And considering outlets like Twitch are basically dominated by people in North America and Europe, it's really nice to see what the Japanese community has to show because oftentimes they were or are the best in some games. So being able to see that is just really an awesome treat. And now we got Yoshimitsu going into a little bit of a run. This is a little bit slower than his previous paces, though, but definitely not impossible. Maybe you can get that 11-second, uh, Raphael. I feel like out of all the stages in the game, you have potential to get those, you know, 11, 10-second stages. Raphael has, like, the least variance in that. Watch him prove me wrong, though. <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember any times where I get, like, sub-15 for Raphael. Like, I mean, if you, th if you look in that situation right there, he timed the garbage perfectly. It's just the fact that uh, the AI still managed to see a clear, which generated stop time, which allowed for them to stay alive a little bit longer. Well, he's going to give it his best effort right now, heading into the cave here. Let's see what Hook Bill does. He's going to do a nice short, quick uh, chain with some combos here. This is possible. Hook Bill doesn't have anything immediately. And he's going to get that wow. 13 second time. 13 seconds. This is really good. Oh, it's looking ever so impossible right now, though, just based on his timer. He's going to need the uh, god times on every single stage here. Let's see what Piranha does now. He's got two six combo starts at the beginning. Does a three chain with a four combo. That could be enough if Piranha doesn't do anything. But Piranha is playing with a pretty low stack, and that might just seal this run right now. Might lab Monty at this point, though. Monty's been having some pretty bad luck so far in the cave, as his time's already above nine minutes so far. Uh huh. Oh, for, uh, in the chat for Soundhound, uh, Cypher did commentary for the beginning half of this. Unfortunately, he did have to leave about an hour ago, so now it's just myself, who is, uh, BB4, he joined with Dark Aries. Cypher did, uh show some great perspectives of the game as being a former world record holder himself. If you guys missed the beginning of this broadcast, I recommend checking it out because he has some pretty cool opinions about the game in terms of like strategies and just how the game works. It looks like the run is dead for uh, Yoshi right there. Can't get world record. Uh, and it's possible he needs like a, a negative... 30 second Bowser or so. Yeah. Just gotta pull one out of his pocket. <laughs> yeah, Monty does clean up pretty well at the end of his run, though. 10 minutes time, that's still pretty respectable. Obviously, way far away from the world record. Very comparable to the first world record of this game, though, that was hovering mm -hmm. around that 10 minute time. Which, it's been a while uh, since we mentioned that, since the beginning of the broadcast, but, uh, this game has been very on and off in terms of world record history for it. Uh, it started about 10 years ago in 2007, where the world record was 6 minutes and 19 seconds by a man named Iron Knuckle. And uh, that was in-game time, which will roughly translate to about 10 minutes in today's standards. But uh, two years after that, Darkwing Duck beat that by a minute, and then a year after that, Cypher beat that by a minute too, to where the RTA was around 8.06. Cypher's run s stood for around five years, a little under five years until cards ended up taking it the first time at a 7.44. Uh, he dropped that a couple of times until recently, about a month ago, Yo Yoshimitsu, who is a long-time Tetris Attack player, but fairly new to speedrunning, got a 7.07, which beat the old record by about 
15 seconds, I want to say. And then, uh, just a week ago, as Cards was practicing for this event, he pulled out a 701, which is the time that you see on the screen right now. So the potential is there. We've had the records drop uh, twice in the past month. A nice Bowser fight by Yoshimitsu. 20 seconds is very, very good for Bowser. Unfortunately, just didn't have the cooperative stages earlier on in that run. But, you know, it makes you feel good when you can kill Bowser pretty quickly. Which I, I will say, is the 701 time card set is, it's going to be a hard time to beat. I think it's possible, but man, it's, it is a great run. We thought the first time he got a sub eight was a great run, but these guys just keep pushing it farther and farther. I think, uh, I'd have to look at card stream. I'm not going to bring that up specifically, but I'm pretty sure his sum of best is like, a low five minute time. So the potential is there, but that's like assuming you get like 10 and nine second fights every single stage. <laughs> Which is very, very unreasonable. Which I'm not sure if anyone in chat can fill us in on this. Uh, I know there's been quite a few chase for the record segments so far. But has there ever been a world record set during one of the events, I wonder? I, I'm pretty sure most of the games I've been featured have very respectable times, so it's very unlikely, but I'd like to know that. Not even close. Well... Maybe Tetris Attack will be the first one. We don't have too much time left, but... It, it's fairly close. I mean, what was the difference? 52 seconds or something on Yoshi's had, side? Yeah, so he had a... Yoshimitsu had a 7.52 earlier, and that's our fastest time of the stream so far. And, uh... Yeah, that's only 51 seconds off. It was possible. He played well for the most part. Um... I see our cards in. His stream is frozen right now, but he's at 5.34 on Piranha, which is a pretty solid pace right now. I wonder how he's doing. And uh, He's been having internet issues for anyone who's came in pretty recently, so uh, maybe it'll load up like it did right there. And it looks like, yeah, 6 to 18 Ooh. on Kamek now, so... The good part about it is that Cards always does local recordings of his runs, so if he does manage to get a world record, uh, in his case, a very slow upload to YouTube, and we'll be able to see it in full. We are going to see this match right here, though. It looks like it might just be a little bit too much to get the world record, though, but still a very respectable pace. Yeah, it looks like uh, it's not going to happen. 6.51. Yeah, and Kamek's still chaining and chaining. But eventually going to go down right there. A little under seven minutes. So, well, maybe Cards can go for the best time on stream so far. He's got a little bit of time to do so. Yep. Alrighty, so we have Monty on a pretty good pace right now. Stage 6 at 3 minutes in. He's going to be the man to watch right now. Ascards is finishing up his Bowser. It would be nice to check him out and see if he can actually get uh, the best time on stream so far. But Monty, oh, he gets a very nice 13 second on Blark. So, alright, he's going to be the next one stepping up to try to beat this time. And uh, to, to help you guys visualize, I see that in chat. Uh, yeah, it is around four minutes. If you want to look at it in game time wise, Cards uh, has a 317 for his world record run. 
which comes out to an average of about 16 and a half seconds per stage. So you don't have too much time to work with. Like that quick kill Monty just had, he, if he did that, if he did that 17 second throughout every stage, he wouldn't get world record, even though how quick it was. You gotta have those 10 to 11 second finishes. All right, Monty, if he closes out uh, Rafael pretty quick here, he's got the garbage to do so. All right, Monty on a really good pace right now to the cave. This is one of the best paces I've seen of the day, actually. I think only Yoshi had one maybe faster. All right, Hookbill, what are you going to do for us? Let's play nice. Very so strong okay. combo to start off with. Oh, he drops it pretty quick, though. Hookbill playing with kind of a high stack. Uh, Monty's going to have a pretty decent follow-up here, though. Is it going to be enough? A little short. The four combos aren't stacking. Thing oh, is, that might be enough. Hookbill wasn't clearing from the top. That Yeah, there's no clear. There we go. Okay, 24 seconds. That's not too bad. He's still in shape for this right now. He needs a little bit quicker times, though, if he wants to close out on this. If anything, Montucky's PB, or Monty, my bad. He went through a username switch recently. But uh, Monty's PB is a 748, so if he cannot get the world record here, he's on very good pace for a PB as well, so... Best of luck to him. He's got a really good start here as well. Piranha's playing with a pretty high stack. This might be it, actually. 12 oh. seconds. We are we're getting there. We're getting there. All right, let's go. The world record's still alive. Could Monty do this? I want to see this, Monty. Pull out some sick times for us, dude. Okay, he's gonna have a pretty good follow-up here with the six. And a nice six to follow up too. He might end it after that. Kamek is playing with a super high stack. If there's no oh. chain follow-up, this could be a death. 13 oh seconds! My God. Whoa! This is happening. This Sorry is happening. Sorry for the loudness. This could be possible. Let's go, Monty. Oh man, this is super possible for world record. Bowser, let's play nice. Let's see this. First time. He oh is man, probably I'm excited. So tense right now. He needs like a 10 second fight here, a little over 10 seconds. He's got some room. All right, a little bit of nerve setting in for the beginning chain here. Oh, Bowser playing with a high left stack. And he's not going for the top. Oh, world record just passed, unfortunately, but this could still be PB pace. This might be the best run of the whole thing. <sighs> Wow, what a great, great run still from Monty. Just a little bit short there, but man, he was making my heart rush there too. Hopefully he gets this PB. That would be super good for him. Second tier, unfortunately. Uh, this might be it though. This is looking good for him. Oh, the chain popped down. Oh no, Bowser, why you do this to us? Oh, man, the heartbreak from Bowser. He's still got time to get the PB though. But this is what Bowser does, man. This is what he specializes in. Very unfortunate, but... Yeah, with that 7 chain, maybe an 8 chain, maybe a 9 chain, <laughs> maybe a 10 chain. Wow. Go for the 11, Bowser. <laughs> oh, dude. Yeah, oh, none of these runs are out. over. Dang. Uh, it, wow. It's not over unless Bowser dies, as we see. Everything can go well, and then he'll just 10 chain. Now, I think Bowser was pretty stingy at the beginning, and we did mention Monty dropped his chain at the very beginning. I don't think it would have been possible, but I'm wondering if he would have sent like a solid three chain with, you know, like a two five combos in between. I'd have to go back and look at it. Like I said, I think Bowser was just playing really stingy, but man, that was that was an insane run at the very uh -huh. end. Yeah, I think that's the second best attempt at this point for the world record because I think the only sub 8 that Yoshi had was the 752 so now yeah, well good stuff to Monty he does get the second best time in the stream so far super close to a PB
I hope uh, he didn't get super nervous at the end. I mean, it happens to us all, but that was a really entertaining run to watch at the very end because he had he really had like exciting. the best pace heading into the cave. He had three super quick kills. Just unfortunately a little bit uh, short at the end of the run. But, you know, that's the, the life of a Tetris Attack player. You, you gotta deal with it sometimes. Mm-hmm. I'll have to talk to him at the uh, end of this exhibition to see if uh, he was just pretty nervous at the end there. But as we try to recover from that uh, heart-throbbing uh, run there, uh, we have FFR going on a little bit of a run currently now, too. So, Froggy at uh, almost three minutes in. Uh, he's got to get this kill probably right now, which he did send appropriate garbage follow-ups at the end. So, he has a pretty decently paced run heading into Stage 6 here. Did cards get a 748? I'm not sure. I know that you were mentioning a 748 as one of his previous times, but I don't know if he got it on stream or not. Huh. He might have. If so, yeah, since we've had a lot of uh, internet issues on his side. I remember we were commentating that one run that was on pace, but it kind of just, like, faded out during Bowser. So, if that's... If that is the case, yeah, we've had uh, three of our four runners finish a sub eight run, which is very incredible. Because as we mentioned before, they are the only four runners to have sub eight. So, yep. <laughs> yeah, we just must have missed it. My apologies on that. All right, FFR Pro on Lunchfish at four minutes in. He's gonna, he's gonna need a lot of luck at this uh, point in the game right now. You better be careful. He almost died there. Actually, just one garbage block fell on that top stack, <laughs> and he was scrambling around for a little bit. He's gonna most likely reset. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, being able to uh, see the, the even more than one sub-8 time on stream is really crazy, considering, again, there's only four people who have a sub-8 time to begin with. And we almost saw that sub-7 time finally happen. Bowser took it away right at the end, though. He needed, like, a 12-second Bowser, though, which is it's not very, very uncommon. Really hard. All right, so what do we got now? Uh, most of them kind of at that stage one progress again. Uh, Yoshimitsu seems to have a pretty decent run uh, going right now. Flying Wiggler at about two minutes in. Haha, -ha, the chat was wrong, dude. His fastest time was 8.05. You guys Damn, better dude. apologize to me now. <laughs> he probably said that like two minutes ago, but I'm like spacing out, not reading the <laughs> chat. <laughs> But I'm glad. I get to brag a little bit, guys. Inflate my ego. <laughs> there you go. I'll get you a bicycle pump for Christmas, so that way you can oh. inflate it even more. Dude, that's what I always wanted. <laughs> but yeah, uh, yeah, exactly what Soundhound said. The 752 and the 757 are our two sub-8s. And Monty was at, like... 650 or 640 when he started the Bowser fight. It was it, it was, was painful really to watch close. the ending. But yeah, it's super close. Hey. 
FFR getting a 17 second stage one. Bit of a slower start, but it's not all that bad. See if Yoshimitsu. Oh no, he couldn't get that kill there, unfortunately. Oh, he still has a, a solid pace heading into the rest of this run. 21 seconds, stage 6 isn't terrible. As long as you can finish, uh, who's upcoming in stage 7? Lunchfish? Yeah. If you can finish Lunchfish, you know, a little over 4 minutes, it's not terrible. But I think at this point in time, like, this game's pretty taxing on you mentally, and when you're, you've been trying to play very hard and you have, like, heartbreak runs like Monty's, it just, it might be a little bit harder for your later runs to find the matches that you want to do. You know, fatigue setting in and everything. It's also just a really active run. Your hands are consistently just mashing on the D-pad and on the face buttons to be able to do the quick actions. it There's definitely some fatigue that can happen as well, considering they've been grinding for almost three hours straight. Yeah, which this showcase did start at uh, 8 p.m. Eastern time, so close to three hours. These guys have been duking it out. Uh, Having some pretty close uh, times for the most part, like we mentioned, two sub eights. They did have a little for fun race at the beginning of this, which I guess technically cards won. Yoshi had a faster time, but he started late. But in my opinion, I guess if you if you not paying attention to when to start the race, sometimes it's just your own fault, or I don't know. Yep. <laughs> at least in most of the tournaments we've organized. Uh, We'll ask the players if they want to restart, but if you made a mistake, started on the wrong difficulty, you gotta, you gotta deal with it and just keep playing. Yeah. yeah, we got, uh, Yoshi not gonna get this kill on Hook Bill. So, unfortunately... This run is pretty dead for him right now. Uh, there are 12 stages total in this speed run. And so when you get to the last third of the run, which we call the cave, stages 9 through 12, you're looking to maybe enter the hookbill fight, which is stage 9, at about, you know, the 4.5 to 5 minute range. Because that gives you, you know, pretty solid times to deal with the end. And you still gotta aim for those quick kills. That's how good the world record is now. You gotta aim for those 15 second kills almost every single time. Well, I mean, FFR is on pretty good pace right now, just slightly over four minutes after Lunchfish, exactly as you were describing. Yeah, yeah, this is not too bad. It kind of, like, slipped past me when I was paying attention to Yoshimitsu for a little bit. So, yeah, FFR, let's see what he can do with uh, Raphael here. We've seen, you know, pretty fast times to the end of, from about just every single person. FFR sending a really big chain, though. This might not be the best for him in the end, but Raphael ignores that left stack, and he's going to die. So, all right, time to turn our eyes to FFR Pro's screen at the top right. Let's see what he can do with the cave. Yeah, this is pretty good pace right now. That's a really nice stack, too. Good start right there with the hearts and the stars. You know, it's funny, in Pokemon Puzzle League, I hate when the groups are all so cluttered, but it works out so well in Tetris Attack. He gets a really good chain follow-up with some garbage intact. Let's see how Hookbill reacts. Uh... He's going to lower his stack a lot, so did FFR send enough? And it doesn't look like it. One line short, but Hookbill does not Get find it. the clear. 
24 seconds, that's not too bad, not too bad. So that's not exactly what FFR wanted. He can still get the record at this point, and he's well on PB pace, but he's going to need to get a lot of those 15-second kills or lower at this point in time, which involves, you know, you got to find these combos quick and do, like, some uh, lag chains or other things of that sort and hope that the AI plays with a high stack. So, so far... Piranha did chain off a little bit. This is looking kind of rough for FFR right now. And he's got to deal with this big garbage block he's got to clear. He could get the kill here if Piranha doesn't find anything, though. Which he does. 27 seconds. Even if he doesn't get world record, he might be another runner to get sub-8 on stream. But it's still looking... It's looking. It's looking. I never lose faith in the run unless it's completely dead, which I think it is now, though. <laughs> <laughs> but PV pace, we root for the PV here. Yep. Because he's got plenty of time for PB, and he has a really good follow-up. Cam explain with some high stacks here, too. This could be it. Oh, That's she finds the, the triangles. Yeah, please, please stop chaining and finding clears for us, Kami. Just start going to stack lowering mode. Oh, but FFR didn't do enough on the follow-up here. Oh, this might be the end of his run right now. It's still possible. Like, we could see the 10-second uh, Bowser pop up on his screen instead. Mm-hmm. Oh, what do we got? No, it's going to get the diamonds right there. Reset. Yep. Yeah, that was super unfortunate for Afrofar. He had one of the uh, the best runs going so far, and you know, uh, we've mentioned it several, several times. The cave's brutal. Sometimes yep. it's just not going to be the best for you. <laughs> Yoshi did something pretty funny on his screen. He like uh. Had a bunch of four combos lined up and just did them all back to back. As you can see, all the little <laughs> tiny garbage blocks stacked on top. I've Worked seen, out. I've seen like nine of those stacked up before, and it just looks so funny. It's just a lot of these three wide garbage blocks just falling down. Alrighty. So I guess Yoshimitsu is the next person to step up a little bit here. Blarg's giving him a little bit of trouble. Uh, three and a half minutes may be a little bit too long for this match, especially since he went up and got that second tier clear twice now. Yeah, I think we're going to see a reset. I'm going to predict in three seconds from Yoshimitsu. Uh, a little longer than three. He's going to reset, though. I feel it. He's going to reset. Don't prove me wrong, Yoshimitsu. <laughs> and is he going to reset? Probably. There, There's no way. Maybe, eh, maybe he's just continuing out for fun because we are at 11 here. I'm not sure exactly when these runners are going to stop. But we are drawing to the conclusion of this uh, event pretty soon here. So we got we got a couple last attempts from these runners. Let's see if we can see something special happen at the last second with a game like Tetris Attack. Who knows? To update anyone that's maybe tuning in to the tail end here, uh, we have not had anyone beat the record so far in this stream. We've had some really close runs so far, especially the most recent one from Monty, who had a world record pace heading into Bowser, but unfortunately just got a little bit unlucky, but finished with a sub-8 time. Yep, yeah, we've had two runners be under a minute for 
trying to beat the world record, which is really close, all things considering. <laughs> That's why Yoshi uh, didn't uh, reset. He got 12 second on Raphael. It's probably the quickest one of the night so far. That's exactly why it's so close, because you can get a 12 second stage, you can get like a 30 second stage. I think Yoshi's just gonna end up finishing this run because sometimes after so many resets, you just want that. Uh... You just want to clear, yeah. Mm hmm. Sometimes it's just chill to listen to this music right now, especially since we have like a. Uh... Lakitu's is played the most, but it's definitely one I can listen to over and over again. Yeah, the soundtrack in this game, it, I, don't, I don't think it's the greatest, but it's definitely fairly relaxing. Unlike uh, Pokemon Puzzle League, for example, where I, I can't even bother listening to the music in that game. It, my, t <laughs> my TV gets put on like minimal volume and I just listen to Spotify or something because I, I can't handle it. Yeah, Pokemon Puzzle League is best described as elevator music, in my opinion. I like it because it's a lot of the stuff from, like, the uh, anime, the 2BA uh, soundtrack, but, you know, very minimal for the game. It, it just doesn't suit the, the kind of feel you want to be in when you're playing puzzle games, I think. Oh, Yoshi got a 10-second Kamek on his end. Might get like, another sub eight, maybe. A ten second Camix. If he got a sub eight after that, uh, who was it? Hook Bill. That could have been world record, dude. Unbelievable. Let's no see more. this ending on Bowser. Let's I'll cry. That. Oh my god, this is like the setup too. <laughs> yeah, Bowser's gonna troll a little bit longer though, like he's been doing the entire stream. What is uh, gonna happen here? The thing is, it doesn't really leave him much. No, there was the second tier right there. Yeah, Bowser's gonna have a little bit of wiggle room here too, since all the garbage was cleared off of his screen. Yeah, no sub eight, unfortunately. Dang. That was crazy though that he still could have gotten sub eight on that run. It still blows my mind. Uh mm huh. -hmm. Oh, Bowser, man. How long are you going to delay another match on stream for us, dude? Almost a minute and a half. It's crazy. He he is the true final boss. Like, we have a joke uh, on Pokemon Puzzle League. The uh, hashtag Mewtwo is free because generally uh, when you play against Mewtwo, who's the final opponent of that game, a lot of people will just quick kill him and end up finishing fast. It's more the like mid and early game that ruins that run. But here, man, it's always Bowser as, oh, oh man, Yoshi's taking a death on him, and then he's just going to reset away that run. Bowser says no, man, you can't beat him. One thing that I don't think any of us actually mentioned is that the end credits actually changes depending on if you've taken a death or not in your run. If you take a death, Yoshi will be like, I feel like we could have done better or something along those lines, which basically tells you to try again, but don't die this time. Doesn't it do still do something similar like that even without a death? No, I think it does um, 
I think it does change the text when you do it without a death. Oh, you know what I'm thinking of? The uh, the Game Boy Color variant of this mm, game. Yeah, not, yeah. not Tetris Attack, but Pokemon Puzzle Challenge. You beat it without continues, and then it still mocks you and says, get better yeah, at the game. That, that, one, that one, I do believe it does still bother you, even if you do it without dying. It was like they just forgot to implement that check. So it looks like we are going to have a little bit more on the runs, though, as long as these guys are up for it. So since I've done this every hour, if you guys are new to the stream watching this, this is Chase for the Record. Uh, it is a segment where we take some of the best runners from each respective game to see if they can beat the world record in a couple hours. Uh, we got Tetris Attack on case now, one of the premier puzzle games. The four best runners on the leaderboards are trying to get the world record for the versus come very hard category. And we've had some pretty good runs so far for the night, but no one has seemed to topple it. Which is funny because Cars of the Heart owns the world record of 701, which you see in the middle there, which he just set last week, actually. So he decided he didn't want to save his luck for this stream and just decided to beat it last week in preparation for it. So we got uh, FFR. He's actually uh, on a really good pace heading into uh, Wiggler here. I don't think he sent a lot of garbage in his chain. That's why he extended it out a lot. Which could actually end up working out because Flying Wiggler cleared almost all of his blocks. But unfortunately just a little bit slow on topping off and didn't get the kill. So that's going to lead to a reset. I just noticed Cars is up pretty late into a run right now, too. Over world record, but he's got that chance to join the sub-8 club for today. It's going to be a little bit tough. He's got to kill Kamek pretty soon here, though. And Kamek's got some clears uh, at his disposal. Man, I should just stop mentioning the pace of the runners, because that's when it dies. They're just killing it all. I'm I'm the reason uh, Monty's run didn't get a PB or world record. I, I I could I could subscribe to that theory. See, this is why I leave that the um, analyst commentary to you. And I just get to do color commentary because I can't really curse anything. <laughs> You're like, if someone's going to go down, let it be him and not me. Yep. Dude, smart moves. Gotta give you some props there. I, I have my moments. We got some runs all over the board right now. Yoshi, quick start to this run right now. And he might get another quick one there with the 12. Okay, Yoshi's got a really incredible start at the beginning of this. FFR Pro getting almost to the midway point of the run at a very good pace. We got Cards and Monty doing some resets right now.
Look at it. There's all those four combos stacked on top of FFR screen, like I mentioned earlier. You just want to try to avoid those as much as you can because it's so easy to find them, but just go out of your way a little bit to find that five because they really do stack better in the end. After that explosive start, Yoshi getting a little bit unlucky here on stage four. He'll probably be able to get this follow-up kill, though, on Wiggler, unless the second tier happens, in yeah, which... Unfortunate all around. Might induce a restart here, but I think Yoshi's going to keep going for it because, you know, the beginning stages were all really, really solid. So, you know, even with a 30-second time, you can still get world record off of it, but you just got a lot to make up later on. Monty with the reset there. FFR getting a really good start time of 12 seconds. Considering that's only one more second compared to the optimal start that Cards finds with his RNG manipulation. That's pretty good. Hey, Yoshi's still uh, committing to this run, which it does have some potential still right now. He should finish up Blark at a very quick time there, 13 seconds. Um, 3.30 at the end of Blark. Definitely very possible. You get a quick kill on Froggy, and you're looking at that four-minute time like I've mentioned before. And so, yeah, this run still has a uh, pretty good pace on... Uh, getting there. Could we see the world record get toppled at the very end of this? It'll be close. It'll be close. He sent a good follow-up. The clear's there, but will he... Oh, uh, yeah, he keeps finding clears pretty immediately. This could be something if... Oh, he didn't send too much garbage on the follow-up. No, I think he kind of figured... Uh, he's pretty good at doing follow-ups for the most part, but I don't know, maybe he's just like... I would assume pretty demotivated by this run in general after that 30-second fight that, you know, when someone makes that many clears, you're just like, I don't want to continue this run. Yeah, now you got Lunchfish going on 50 seconds there. He's going to reset. So far, still going on pretty good pace. Got a 20 second stage. I think the last one was 24 seconds or something like that. So, overall, still doing pretty good. Yeah, I want to see FFR bust out a good run. Oh, he, wow. he got like two sick combos at the beginning. That was crazy. That's going to help. Hopefully, uh, we see Froggy not do anything here. All of his garbage didn't send, so this might be good for him. As you see, it all stack up, but just a little bit short on topping out. And we got uh, two runs going from Cards and Monty side by side here. Cards with a, a pretty big uh, lead over Monty, though, of 10 seconds, but both still doing really, really well. Because Cards had his uh, consistent 11 at the beginning of his first match and then got a 10. He likes to pull off a 10 on the second match, I see quite a bit. But Monty's going to keep that uh, consistency up, and he's going to be heading into stage 4 now. We got, like, three runners right around that same mark, though. I could see cards resetting pretty soon, though. And Yoshi's going to get that uh, force kill. Over there. I guess Bucci did have one clear still, though. So. Wasn't enough.
Monty is doing really well, though. He's looking to maybe repeat that performance for earlier and hoping that Bowser result's going to change. I feel like Monty is a very momentum-based player. Like, he definitely has the skills to do stuff. It's just, like, Yoshi has the most consistency, and you'll see him pull out those uh, world record pace runs more. But when Monty is, like, feeling it, good stuff happens from him. And then, it, oh, a little bit short on the garbage clear there. But... He pulls out these runs out of nowhere, and he had the best pace run of the night going into Bowser, and just was a little bit short of making it happen. But even with that 26 uh, Froggy there, he's still got a bunch of time to work with. Three minutes heading into Blarg. Uh, let's see what he can do. Well, that's a statement there with the 12 yeah. second on Blark. I'm gonna say that's a really good stage six right there. So yeah, as everyone else has been doing resets right now, Monty looking to do another run. I hope he at least gets a PB, man. That that one run was just heartbreaking for real. It was. I think he deserves a PB after that. He didn't have the greatest chain at the beginning here. He's hoping he can find a follow-up really quick. But Lunchfish playing with a really high right stack, and he's going to get that kill. So that's when that luck factor plays in a little bit there. You know, not the best follow-up, but sometimes the AI is just not paying attention. You'll get that kill. All right, if Monty can get a quick kill here, this will be very reminiscent of his past run that he did because he finished it about four and a half minutes in. And he's got a really good follow-up so far. Oh, and Raphael just raised his stack, so this could be good if he stops doing clears right here. This might be the kill. Uh, yep. yep. Okay, Monty heading into the cave with a really good pace. Oh, man, please don't repeat the uh, <laughs> results of last time. Let's go, Monty. All right, starting off with two four combos. He missed the last one at the end, but... Uh, Hook Bill's not doing a lot. He's going to find some more chains at the bottoms. Monty's probably going to need to have a decent follow-up here. Yeah, the five combo. This could be enough. I'm not sure. We'll see when this falls. Is this going to be enough? Second. The second tier bails out Hook Bill, though. This is looking rough so far. 32 seconds. Uh... That's a lot higher than we'd like to see. Yeah, unfortunately. Luckily for him, he did have a good pace going into this. Uh, it's still possible. He needs some really quick stages from here on out, though, which I think is exactly what happened last time. He didn't have that long of a hook build, but it was still a little bit long. And then his Piranha and Kamek were super fast. Mm -hmm. But he's not getting the greatest start right now, so oh, this might be it for this attempt for him. Decent follow-up. It's not gonna top off Piranha though. And yeah, that's that's gonna officially kill the run. There right. was just only a little bit more garbage. That would have been really nice because they didn't clear the uh, hearts in time for it to actually clear the garbage. Uh, well, the good thing for Monty is, even though world record is not possible at this point in time, let's see if he can actually beat his PB now because he can get two quick stages to end here. And I'd love to see a 7.30 get pulled out by Monty. Uh -huh. It's probably a lot better this time because he knows that he can't get world record anymore, but personal best is probably a little bit less nerve-wracking. Mm -hmm. And for the people watching, uh, Monty has a personal best of 7.48, so he does have quite a bit of time to play with here. But, man, he's just dropping a lot of chains right now. I hope he can... Uh, Maybe recover a little bit. Oh, Kamek playing with the high stack. But it's going to lower it all and not be topped off here at the end. 
Let's see what kind of follow-up mods you can have here. Oh, you got a five chain off of that. Did you see that? Well, that was that was mm -hmm. weird. Sometimes uh, Tetris Attack's engine can give you chains that are just odd, to say the least. But Cam dragging on quite a while here. This is probably the end of his PB attempt as well, unfortunately. Yeah. Past 7.30, so... There's no way that it could happen. You know what? As we've been watching Monty, though, we got Yoshimitsu on a Stage 9 run as well, so... Now that uh, Sub 8's impossible for Monty, let's check out Yoshimitsu. And Hookbill's not doing a lot. This could be the kill that he wants here. Is he going to find clears immediately? He's still mm. chaining. Chaining near the bottom, though. Stop time's going to run out eventually. Yeah, I hate when they get into that mode because, you know, they just go for the clears even though they weren't going to be in enough time for the chain. They're still going to go for those clears because that was like the thought process of the CPU. So it ends up wasting probably 10 more seconds than it should have been. But he ended up finishing it uh, six minutes in a piranha. Um, very unlikely at this point. Yep. Probably impossible. We would like to be proven otherwise. For sure, for sure. Very good start here, though. Prana's probably going to have a little bit of a chain upcoming. But let's see what happens here. Yeah, opposite stacks here, so Prana's going to have to lower blocks. Let's see if Prana finds a clear. Oh, and the reds will just line up there at the end. Maybe still sub-8? Maybe? Probably. Hopefully. It's possible. He could get a new best time uh, for the day, too, because they're all, they have all been high seven-minute times, so you get a quick Kamek, quick Bowser, beat that 752 that was set earlier. See, I like what Yoshi just said there, because it's, it's something that you would see only of his high skill to do. I saw the five combo as it happened there, but what he actually did was he moved the star panel out of the way to set up the chain underneath when he, uh, I'm just gonna use, like, MOBA terms, procs, the five combo. Normally, at, like, a casual level, you wouldn't see that there. You would just see, oh my god, I got five stars that I can put together for a combo. Yeah, because I see it in chat. This The game only have, bears the Tetris name because Nintendo was like, let's use the Tetris name, A, because we own it, and B, because it will help sell this game in the West a lot better. And yep, basically. If you want to see a detailed explanation of it, uh, Ares gave a pretty good one towards the beginning of this broadcast that I'd recommend listening to. I've done quite a few lore updates in the stream. Man, I haven't seen a recent Bowser fight that's, like, gone under 30 seconds. He's just... He's the biggest troll of the day, for sure. Yeah. Going over a minute now. Crazy. We got cards starting something at the top left, though. Flying Wiggler, he can finish within two minutes, which would be a really, really good time. Which I'm not sure. I don't think he sent the uh, the greatest amount of garbage, and 
Wiggler is being a little bit uncooperative as well. Dang, almost two minutes. Bowser is the real run killer. He's the real villain in this whole game. It takes Yoshi to fill up his entire screen just to kill him, man. Two minutes and two seconds. Actually, I think Cards also mentioned in chat earlier that he had a two minutes and two seconds. Bowser at one point. Crazy. Yeah, it makes sense, man. Bowser's brutal. Get to hear that amazing <laughs> sound effects at the end yep. there, the Bowser, as he disappears, man. Yoshi makes him vanish into thin air, dude. I love the end credits. Maybe you'll watch them a little bit, but it's just like uh, this random, what is it, the red Yoshi or something? No, it's like the like half-size green Yoshi or whatever. Wait, here we go. Who's coming? No, no, oh, we won't know. It. <laughs> it's a mystery. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's unfortunate that you have to go through the whole kind of really boring cutscene at the end just to get the end credits. Mm -hmm. There's no way to really skip it. All right, we got cards and FFR both on pretty solid runs right now. Cards can hopefully finish off this lunge fish. He doesn't have the greatest garbage scent. It's gonna be a pretty decent follow-up that might kill though. And that it will, 22 seconds. Hopefully FFR can find the follow-up himself pretty soon here, but it looks like uh Blarg's doing a little bit of chaining himself. Still possible that we can get good runs right now out of uh, both top half cards and FFR. It's a really large combo from cards side. Let's see what drops. Not really that much. Yeah, he he should have. Uh... He needed that really bad because now it's over five minutes. Raphael's going on above 40 seconds now, and yep, there's the reset. So I believe we're coming to the end of this broadcast, though. We might just see a couple more attempts from each one of these people. And if that's the case, yeah, we, we appreciate everyone who stopped by to check out Tetris Attack today. It's been a blast uh, reading what you guys have been talking about in chat and everything. It's really awesome to see so many people interested in this game that we really much appreciate and just want to share. Because uh, puzzle games definitely do not get their uh, time in the daylight uh, compared to other games. Also, it's kind of really impossible that this game does get re-released at any point until uh, Nintendo owns the rights to the, use the name Tetris again, which looks kind of unlikely at this point in time, since the rights have been kind of bouncing around everywhere. So, mm -hmm. That's why you see Pokemon Puzzle League getting... Uh... A virtual console release and not Tetris Attack. Yeah, I mean, if we look at the uh, SNES Mini and the Super Famicom Mini, like those new new ones that came out, 
Panel the Pawn is in the Japanese mini Super Famicom. Uh, Tetris Attack is not out for obvious reasons on the SNES Mini. It's really funny because all they would have to do is just call the game Yoshi's Panel the Pawn as they did in Japan, but I guess they just don't have the means to do it. Which I don't doubt because um, with this game and Panel the Pawn, all the graphics are actually compressed for the Super Nintendo, and nobody knows how to decompress them, so if Nintendo lost the notes in the source code, which very well possible it could happen, they probably have no way to actually easily change the title on the game itself. There was one person who figured it out when they translated Panel the Pawn into English, and they never shared how they did it, so if you can search far and wide and you will not find how to change the graphics in this game, or decompress and recompress them. So unless um, people are fine with just like the Japanese menus, I don't think this game will ever get released in its current state. Which is a shame, but oh well. Hopefully we can see another game in the series in the future, or there's some promising side projects. Shoutouts to uh, Super Plexus and Medley Studio. That's a game out on iOS right now that uh, has some pretty high hopes, and I definitely recommend checking it out. It's a little bit of a twist. It's not the exact formula, but it's super fun coming from a Puzzle League Tetris Attack player. It was heavily inspired by games like Tetris Attack and Pokemon Puzzle League, so... So as you see, we got a couple starting. I think we're figuring out if we want to do a race to end it off or we just might end it here. I think we're waiting for a couple others to make a decision right now. But while we are deciding that, uh, like I said, thanks for everyone who's stopping by. Uh, Speed Gaming does a lot of great events like this one. And... Uh, Restreaming marathon events, tournaments, things like that. If you're interested in speedrunning at all, you need to follow these channels if you haven't yet. Uh, they have a link to the past randomizer going on right now. Uh, they have Super Mario Odyssey tournament, Mega Man, uh, Super Mario 64, tons of other things. And they're doing showcases this month. So if you're in a speedrunning community, and uh, want to show off a community race of your own, you should get in contact with these guys because they they definitely want to show off all the communities out there. But a little bit about us as well. Uh, myself and Dark Aries are from a community called Puzzle General, and uh, we started in the community of games like Tetris Attack and Puzzle League and have recently expanded to just all kinds of puzzle games so if you guys want to check us out you can uh find us at discord.puzzlegeneral.com as well as on twitter youtube and twitch we do events similarly to these except we might not focus on speedruns sometimes we're just all about puzzle content yeah i mean even recently the uh, new puzzle fighter for android and ios came out there's some chatter in our discord just about that um People come in, they ask, oh, has anybody played this uh, puzzle game? And somebody will be like, yep. Because we just love basically all sorts of puzzle games, so. Oh, looks like the link's not working, apparently. I want to test it. Now it works. Discord.puzzlegeneral.com Actually, it's not working on my end. Let it me might grab... be a routing issue. Let me grab... A different link really quick for you guys. Shouldn't uh, this one work? Let me try it. Oh, that, that one should work for sure. <laughs> My bad. We'll we'll yell at our other friend to try to get that working in the future. But yeah, yeah, sorry about that, guys. That, that link just posted in there if you guys want to check us out. And then uh, we've had other communities associated with us, like Tetris Attack Online. 
<laughs> you got timed out. Yeah, I forgot a lot in the channel, but bit.ly slash puzzle general and all that. Oh, yeah, yeah, awesome. that one works, too. We, we have a few links to try to make life easy. But, yeah, check out that. Uh, the other link will be up eventually if you just want to check it out later. Uh, community Tetris Attack Online. We're uh, linked with within our Discord. You can find an invite there. Or I'm pretty sure you can just search Puzzle General online and you'll figure out how to be in contact with us. But yeah, I guess that's it for us. Special shout outs to Speed Gaming for letting us show this. Uh, Fiesel, the man behind the scenes who we've worked with for over a year now with various tournaments since our Tetris Attack tournament last year. Major thanks to him for letting us do this. And the runners specifically who took three hours, three and a half hours of their time to do runs tonight. Yep. I guess we'll watch the end of this Yoshimitsu run and he might reset pretty soon. But yeah, that's about it for us. Any last words from you, Aries? Um, not really. Just uh, thank you to everybody who decided to come and watch today. It uh, makes me really happy to see so many people are interested in a game like Tetris Attack. I know it's not uh, Super Metroid or A Link to the Past or anything like that, but I still think it's a really interesting game that showcases a lot of skill. And I'm happy to see that there's other people who agree with me. And uh, yeah, thank you to Fiesel for giving us an outlet to be able to show uh, this uh, or chase the record. It's really great when puzzle games get to be in events like this, I think, so. Mm hmm Yeah, and uh, Fall Speed Gaming, of course, there. I don't think there's anything for the rest of the night on this specific channel. But if you want to watch some more uh, speedrun type stuff, go to Speed Gaming 2. There's a link to the past randomizer happening right now. And I don't know about you guys, but there's a reason it's the most viewed because it's so entertaining to watch. So highly recommend that. But yeah, for uh, Dark Aries and myself, all the runners, all Puzzle General community and Speed Gaming, thank you guys for watching, and hopefully we'll see you guys pretty soon. Yep, see ya.